Oh yeah, this is this is this is a nice little rain off for me right now. This is this is me getting to my weekend, Anna. This is yep. just yep. Trying to do some painting and, and and whiskey or something. There'll definitely be but there'll be whiskey on the shelf. Oh sure. okay. <laughs> there nice. Go. There you go. Huh? Good. Drinks are good sometimes. And I'm really, really, really looking forward to going out next year. It'll be great to see you both. Yes. Yeah, it'll be great. That will be, uh, that will be, that will be, be so a much fun. fun. Time, definitely. There's so many friends that come into to Gary Cup that it will be just awesome. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a real fun. Uh... I'm, I'm more excited about that one than Game Hall. And I think it's the timing, you know, with COVID and everything. Yeah. And me yeah. just actually re acclimatizing myself to people. Um, it's yeah. like Game Hall, I'm still a little bit, I don't want to be around people. Yeah. Um, but Gary Khan, I'm, I am like a rabid dog. I want him. Yeah, exactly. Me too. I, I think we could be beyond pandemic then and, and, and have fun. So, yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to, because the, the last one, of course, was the one well, forgetting the COVID year, the one before it was cancelled. Like, you know, the, yep. the, the, the Gary Khan 12. Um, so my oh, Mac, yeah. Mac never got to see prime time, you know. Yeah. Um, I was disappointed by that, and I had a big version of it that I was going to do at the uh, auction. And I put, a hot, I had the dragon that I painted for them, and yeah. it's still sitting there on the shelf. But I'm beginning to get that excitement again because I'm going yeah, we'll to do something from again. I'm on, doing a on, map form again, yeah. you know. And we should do big on, on seminars and stuff. I Maybe mean, we, we we should have like a fantasy map awesome. show on stage. Hundred percent. Yeah, no, 100%. I'm in for that. I'm yeah. in for that. We just got to get that. Skin. Yeah. Get, I mean, I've been trying, and I'm not bashing anyone, but and then we I've been trying to get stuff more on, on stage too, scheduled. if possible, and, and, and things like that. We should have, but then, yeah, as I said, you should have at least one by yourself, map, mapping it out, seminars. Like oh, no. No, no, I don't do that with the plans. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, you no, don't? No, no. You don't? No, do I'm going to do that with Jay and you, because I'm not going to do that on my own. Oh, no. No, okay, I actually, I, I do more one. GMing. I do okay. more GMing nowadays. Ah, awesome! Yeah, but then we, yeah, we have a fantasy mapping show and a babble and. We're definitely gonna and, do that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be awesome. So I'm gonna get, yeah. I'm gonna get with Josh Pop, and I'm gonna have Josh at the weekly Gary Khan meeting. Stay. This is what's gonna, what we wanna have happen. Whether yeah. we tie it in with what, we're, what uh, uh, live stream it too at the same time, but because the, they still haven't gotten to me with what they want me to do for all the Greyhawk content uh, virtually like we did last year. So I'm waiting on that still. So. Got you, Cal's death. Got you on the VIP. I'll, I'll get that. I may be able to get those shows on uh, because of, uh, you know, uh, I'm just the behind the scenes guy for this one. So <laughs> we're in good shape. Until we. <coughs> Excuse the, me. The, the mix coming because then Jay takes center stage. That was so awesome with Jared Blando. We didn't mess. Oh, yeah, that was, that was funny. That was funny. I'm yeah. probably going to be very quiet tonight. No, I want to <laughs> learn he, tonight. Yeah, but yeah, tonight's he, more of a learning for me. But it was so awesome to mention Battletech. And yeah. <laughs> oh, oh you mentioned that. Battletech? How about my 5,000 miniatures? <laughs> yes. <Yeah, it's laughs> <Yeah. Yeah>. <laughs> that was so awesome. That was like nerdiness. Like, yeah, was nerd like extreme. Light bulbs turned on both Jay and, and Jared were like, yeah. <laughs> and, and the thing took off. Yeah. He was he was actually a great guest. I mean, we should get, oh, yes. absolutely get him back on yeah. at some future point. Yep. Can we find some other cool topic that I think would be perfect for. Starting to crank around here. We're still yeah. at 12, 13 minutes before official start time. So, um, my, uh, Anna, tomorrow night, uh, Bill's having a little barbecue at his house, and uh, Tim and his family's going, and my family's going. Um, and uh, so I get to see a 90% done uh, arena for the, uh, for the oh, Grand Mealy. Yes. Done. Is that bad? It's Painted, matted, painted. Yeah, he's just doing finishing touches on it. Yes. Wow. So yeah, um, um, and it's gonna blow away what the pictures are here on this on these screens with that. Uh, I think he, 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 he oh, kind yeah. of uh, he, he pipped it. So it's a oh yeah, 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 it's gonna look yeah. awesome. I'm looking forward to that. So see that tomorrow night. I'll take some pics or something. Cause I'm not gonna have it hold over. Gonna roast some old miniatures there, Jason. <laughs> That's cool. I, I actually really like the uh, the painting too that was just on that video right there the, with the bridge and the tower. That was that was nice painting on there. Yeah, there's some good. Uh, uh, some, oh, you know, here's the pit. Yeah, there's the pits. Uh, yeah, he's uh, can't wait to see it. So. Yeah. 
that'll be a blast. Are you not entertained? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, Jason, that bridge rocks, and that bridge is probably, um, we gotta figure out how to get that printed, because, uh, you know, uh, that's a 24-7 print job for weeks, so. You should, you should build a kind of landscape that the bridge makes sense, you have a tall bridge going from cliff face to cliff Yeah, so the issue is, is that, with the way my table is, you don't want to make it a fixed permanent fortification anywhere, right? So no, you you, but you have to make the the you have end pieces that right. be like terrain with rock faces that the bridge can go over, so to speak. That Absolutely. Be, yeah. Hey, Greg, good to see you. So yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun uh, coming up. Got a lot of, I got a new mill coming too. That thing's gonna look really cool. It was from uh, Gamescape's Patreon, and that is uh, here. We're gonna go to this this one next here. And then we'll... People are starting to come on here. I think uh, you yeah. know the the community's still getting used to this time and place. Yeah. Ah, that's all right, man. That's all right. You know, uh, uh, playing and lurking is fine, man. You know, I I'm fine with the lurk all day long. <laughs> I have some ideas for next uh, the next coming shows too. Oh, we, good, good. Very we cool. should add to, so we can talk about that afterwards. So, Very yeah. cool. Yep. Very cool. Well, we can dig into now. We'll be starting covering the very basics. There's a set of basics we should cover. Yeah. He's been hard work. He's got a lot more of our, our gamescape stuff coming. Yeah, they look fantastic. A lot of the dungeon dressing. Yeah, but I love that little village with those huts and stuff. Yeah, and all the, the market stalls, all that. All this we have, almost all you see yeah. there, uh, he sent us, and it's all yeah. painted. Oh, Most wow. of that is all painted up, but yeah, so. Oh, that is. Yeah, so we got, we got a bunch of new stuff coming. I think my aunt is doing well there, Triana. So. <laughs> some, uh, Show up. So, and then there's our there's our show piece on our table right there. The and that's all those craft right there. Yeah, that's been a centerpiece in several games. Yeah, yeah, I got it for Strangekeep Castle from the Gord books, right? And I have it yeah. for uh, Wolf, the Ruins of Wolfmaster Keep and the Lord Mills too. So, both of those. Is it one piece or can you move things? Uh, it is kind of one piece, but there's four levels. You can actually take that apart and see a lower level and upper ah. level of buildings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But then you don't want to do that. Because <laughs> it's hard to get back together. It's like 250 yeah. pieces. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Biggie, uh, things are going well. Work is the okay, word, work is the word. Yeah, I think we have to, to say thanks to Christoph and Graham for the night. Yep. It's a team effort. Yeah, work is the word. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, look at that. We still got eight minutes, you know? I, I, oh, yeah. Um, Early. That's okay. Early's not bad. So believe it or not, Alyssa, I got my first piece of art. I've showed it on a couple, uh, and it's on our t-shirts now that I actually commissioned professionally. Um, yeah, that was a great piece. Yeah, I'll show it. It's being uh, framed now. You know, uh, getting a custom frame. Yeah, so but, you know, uh, you're an expert now. Now you can tell us <laughs> all about how to commission stuff. On, on art, uh, one, one time. <laughs> so I wouldn't call myself anywhere near an expert yet. <laughs> well, you had, you had wonderful results. So. Thanks. I don't, I, either it was beginner's luck or, or very high skill. Yeah. Who, who was the artist? Carson drew it. Carson Wong. Okay. He's on okay. uh, Twitch. He's uh, got like 30,000 followers. So I'll, I'll show a Oof. picture. Okay. Yeah, I'll show a picture of it. Uh, and I'll also show the shirt that it's uh, on and that we're selling for Virtual Crowdcon. So. All right, tonight, everyone. Hey, Paul John's life. Good to see you. I need 
to the map. Now what? Good <laughs> question. What do I do? Yeah. Who's in charge? And I've actually been on both sides of this too, because I've actually commissioned a lot of stuff over the years. And I've, I've, I've had various results too, I've had quick ones, <laughs> and I've had others just drop off the face of the earth too. Yeah, you know, so. and there's been several times I've asked, that's why I came up with the melee, because I've asked my dad, I need a map for the next set, what the hell am I supposed to do? And, and, and then I was like, okay. <laughs> so I've been in that bind too, I haven't actually commissioned anything. For my own use, because I haven't published anything, so it's only been for my own use, so to speak. So, well, my so. husband and I went nuts years ago, even with unpublished stuff, which is like uh -huh. characters and stuff there for um, games. Yeah. Just and occasionally, like he wants a shadow run, and we'll that this cool scene will happen, so we'll go up and commission a piece of art for it, you know, just to capture that moment. So not everything that we do gets published. No, sure. and it was very different before you could you could Google stuff on the internet. Oh, to yeah. the library. You had, either had to draw it yourself, you had to find someone to draw it for you. Oh, well, then you'd options. get like Dragon Magazine or something, there'd be someone yeah. with the little ads in the back. Yeah, and, and it was yeah. hard to scan because even that was 25, 30 years ago, it was almost impossible to use a computer to scan it. One of my saddest moments actually was back in England about 30, 40 years back, and obviously well before the internet and all the rest of it. And there was a guy advertising his artistic talents at a local game store. And he was good, like he was really top yeah. tier. And yeah. so we got him over to the house during one of our sessions. We explained our characters to him and we were all going to commission our characters get done. And he started sketching them as we were drawing and God, Damn, this guy had talent. I just wanted to murder someone. He was that good. <laughs> and um, like he went and, and the sketches, like just yeah. the sketches as he was doing it in front of us were so good. We were just sitting there saying, oh, no, no, oh, we'll, we'll take them. We'll take them now. We'll buy them now. And it was like, let him take me. I'll take them away. I'm going to ink them in, get them ready. I'll come back. And we never heard from him again. And we were like, oh, but they were so good. We were to this that day. That is terrible. Oh, it was yeah. crushing. It was, and he was so good, and he really got the characters so yeah. on it. And yeah. yeah, we never heard from him again. It was so sad, and he never got paid. It's like, yeah, so, yeah, but he was, he's, oh, that's double whammy. Both for yeah. you and for him. So, yeah, and I remember back in the day from Dragon and other sources, and and I took like thin paper and traced off dungeons and and from tourist maps that I went went to Greece for the first time, and I saw these kind of cool stuff. So I basically literally did, took my camera and just picture and then I, I went and used that and traced the, the picture from 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 the, the, the paper fake picture that I got back from the lab and traced it onto paper and, and, and redraw it and use the dungeons and, and the castle designs and stuff. That was how you had to do it in the eighties. Oh yeah. The internet. Yeah. Oh yeah. Don't yeah. trace there were a lot paper. of stuff that younger people don't even realize what horrible hurdles we had to go through hoops to go through. Set up a little light box and things like that yeah. so you can, yeah. 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 And the, the maps had to be basically, well, I can show the first time you pencil in stuff and, and, and you just work it. And yeah, that's when the days when we had our, our old ordnance map and stuff, that, that looking maps and stuff. Yeah. Come it's on, much on, easier on. now in a way, but on the other hand, now you have all the options, you feel like the results need to be wonderful all the time. Back then, any scribble would do, so to speak. No, well, I'm, I don't know about you, but uh, for my group, I actually feel a huge amount of pressure because they know I'm a professional cartographer. Yeah. And I feel like I can't just like knock something out that will just be functional. Yeah, I, if it's I, going in front of players, it has to be top tier. And yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah. that is pressure. Yeah, it's a that is pressure. pressure. I, I feed my players crap all the time just to get used to get them used to the fact that they will not get top notch maps. All the on time. the flip side, though, if one of them is GMing and he's drawing the map on the mm -hmm. table, you know, yeah. on the vinyl, and I'm sitting there, and they they can feel the pressure of my disapproving look. As <laughs> yes, they the always come in like, don't look chairs. at this map, and, and it's crappy and whatnot. So, yep. Hopefully, everyone's well tonight as we're uh, we're uh, talking behind the scenes here about some interesting yep. things. I'm J.K. Lurk. Gazumba, and we have Anna Meyer and Alyssa Faden Hello. again. Fourth episode, Fancy Mapping Show. No guest tonight because we're going on a little different tangent tonight. Yeah. Um, I need a map now. What? I mean, that's perfect. I mean, I've been saying that <laughs> for forty years. 
Yeah, Seriously, I think everybody D &D, says yeah. that, and and I do. I've done it, and and Alyssa, we've all been there. Is when we run games and do our preps and and stuff like that, we feel like I we need a map, so to speak. That every DM has been there many many times. Yeah. And it's a great question. So, uh, Alyssa, you said you're on both sides of the spectrum on this. So you want to elaborate a little bit on that? We're talking behind the scenes. Well, well from the point of view that, you know, even with artwork, general artwork or maps, even to this day, to be honest with you, um, and we're going to get into some detail on this later on. But, I mean, obviously, I draw maps professionally, just like Anna does. So I've been on that side. I've been on the side of contracts and talking about project and project details and scooping it out and costing it out i've been on that side but i've also been on the other side because i'm a gm um where i will be sitting there regularly going okay so i need a map now what <laughs> yep. so, you know where do i go from here am, am i doing it myself am i finding something that's out there on the webinets and just leveraging that um, or am I going off to get a commission um, done? So, and when it comes to more traditional artwork, I've definitely got a lot of that commission. I, I actually did something recently for a, a game. I was like, I need some artwork for this. I contacted um, Dan Smith. And I was like, you know, I, he actually did something for me. So I've been yeah. on that side as well. Yeah, I've I been mean, semi on that for my Shieldlands campaign. I, I commissioned a friend in Sweden to do some some creature art and stuff like that too. So that is coming. So so that I hope it could be useful. But even my patrons will will be given it to, to, when it's done too, and I've used it. And also for um, D D D in a castle, I want to have some some uh, custom monster designs and stuff like that to go with it. So and I'm not that particularly good with scribbling stuff like that. So yeah. So please note we will take a lot of questions tonight on. This because that's oh, what yes, this is exactly. all about. All right, yep. you know. Mm -hmm. So hey, Lots Megan, good to see you. So yeah, um, and, and welcome. Thank you all. I know people are still getting used because it's not a weekly show, so it's once a month. So people will be rolling in here, I guarantee, soon. So a couple things. First things first. Um, the giveaway tonight. Uh, uh, Frog God Games has been uh, like the official sponsor out of all sponsors we have for for uh, the Fantasy Mapping Show. And uh, oh, let me hit this up here. We have a biggie thank you for that host there so let me uh let me just set this up here they're going to give away a $25 gift certificate to their store which is awesome and then i'm going to show you like a pile here that i have really quick and that should have worked hopefully that'll 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 work up there okay oh you have some wrong buttons to press yeah i always do yeah. so here's yep. a pile of my current frog and I, this is not my any necromancer game stuff this is all frog guy because they have swords and wizards wow. which is old school so i'm getting there i mean look at the size wow, of that white that. book is that is that giveaways oh this is my this is my personal stuff oh okay let I me, was look at that, that light yeah. book right there yeah what yeah is that? Like, this is, is thick. what what kind of bible is that this is that this is, is the entire blight series of adventures yeah so um wow uh wow. yeah uh yeah. it's got yeah it's, it's only um 800 some pages so um yeah but there's some great opportunity now this is probably more than the 25 dollars but you know there's some other there's some great things on there that you can get started with with that 25 dollar gift certificate and note this uh we have at least 200 dollars of giveaways coming during great virtual crowd con from frog uh, games during the sh live stream so you're going to see a lot of content from uh from them and then you can get really cool like source books here's like a here's one cat's cradle which is a, which is a small town a town source book i mean look and that's just that's just nice and small there and this one uh, it's got colored uh, th this map looks familiar in here is that who's, is, who's oh that? oh i wonder who did that i wonder who did that cat's cradle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually fun fact i think cat's cradle has actually got my husband's one of his first writing credits in there oh uh, um let me see here. i think cat's cradle um yeah jackal I am... which is an awesome name by the way jackal jackal mm -hmm. I, I, or mystical mystical I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, it's I, so cool. I'm, look, I'm looking here yeah he did a huge amount of writing okay all right all right yeah um and uh like all of the npcs in it but oh, uh, okay. well it's a great he's book. a big NPC oh, guy at, yeah i mean so go off and get that 
Yes. So go off and buy that. My, My guess is that you can get awesome. this for the easily for the uh, twenty five dollars oh, yeah. with a bunch oh, of yeah. other things too. And there's five E and Sword and Wizardry and Pathfinder versions. Uh, now they may not all be, not all be available in hard copy, but there are available. You know, there's PDFs of it too. You can get both. Uh, so just wanted to show uh, if you're into Pirates Razor Coast stuff. Which uh, you know they have um, some neat, some neat things. So yes, or save I, the twenty five dollars and get Necropolis when it comes out because that will be soon. yes. And let me see if that let me see if this works here. Because um, uh, uh, where's my where's the shout out? Shout out! There you go. That should be the Necropolis Kickstarter right there. So I've linked that in cool. in stream chat, and that should still work to the Necropolis Kickstarter. I did back that. I also backed the Rapanathic miniatures. Dale, did you do that? As well as sure, I did. I, I backed it fully um, for the because um, the Rapanathic miniatures are, are, look really awesome. So uh, I wanted to get them and uh, more stuff for build a paint. Okay, so yeah. thank you, Frog God, uh, for that. And um, yeah, so I, for the first time in my life, commissioned an artist, and I've I've showed this a couple times. I don't think Alyssa saw it. I'm gonna flip it up real quick and then just mm -hmm. go, well this is it's a great this start is, of the show. Yeah. Well, the, step number one is I, I got this. I got actual content for the first time in my life from uh, an artist and now I know now I can, can appreciate <laughs> how wonderful uh, you know artistry you know, artwork is here uh, to to get done and here so this is it being uh, mad and set up I'm just gonna throw it right up on here on the screen and cover my face this is the return of the moat house uh, this is by Carson Druitt Carson Ooh. Wong and so I'm getting it all matted and and, and custom framed and I figured I figured I'd snap a picture of that uh, as it was going and then we uh, took that and Anna helped me edit this and put this into the return to the moat house t-shirt <laughs> for Grail Con yep, with the old the school homlet and, look, and, right? Yes. And that pinkish color. So, yep. uh, yeah, so we have them. So that's all I've ever done with a professional artist in my life. We all know I have a map. Exactly. How I helped you with that. Yep. Yes. Yes. You, yes, absolutely. I have a map of my city in Greyhawk that's actually on Anna's map. It's actually in almost semi-published source right now at this point. Mm -hmm. It's in Canon well, it's Fire. Up, it's, up, it's up to you if you want to publish it now. So, so, exactly. so it's your version of, of, of Greyhawk so, maps. Yep. Here's my map. I have a map. I, 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 now what? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So yeah. let's figure out what, what, what I should do. What, yeah. what are some suggestions for me and, or for in you, general? So Yeah, you basically have three main ways of doing it, so to speak. You can either just Google city map bits and, and put it together and just use other pieces of, of whatever cool looking map you can find on the internet. That doesn't cost anything and you can just use if you if you want to do it real quick and don't spend any money on it you can just do it and and if you have a little bit of, of skill you can just copy and paste pieces so to speak and and just use that that is as an inspiration that doesn't cost much and you can use it especially if you only want to use it as a, a dm kind of map for, for your own notes, so to speak, and then scribble it down on, on the simple VTT or, or, or just, if you don't want to have a fancy presentation, meaning if you wanted to, meaning if you have miniatures, like you have a terrain, you might only want a reference map to, to, to place, to tell you which house to place where, so to speak. And then then just Google something that looks cool in your eyes and just go with it. That might, that's the cheap and dirty option, but it's, that's not also a kind of boring. For, yeah, Ex exactly, yeah. it's the it's the quick and dirty option. If you don't have a big budget and you don't have time, that's the the the, the quick way of getting at least something barely functional. And if your specifics, if your need is pretty loose, you know, exactly, you, just a you just need a city or, or something, yeah. a dungeon, mm -hmm. yeah. or to take your players through. Yeah. But you need then, a... if you have more of a specific need, mm -hmm. what's the next option? Then? Yep. Right. The next option is is to make it yourself, and that's something we can dedicate ten different shows in the future about, so to speak. So, so we but we need to mention it. That's something, but that takes it that can save you money, but it will take a lot of time to to find the right tool and to learn it. I've been messing with cool. Incarnate, and I've learned one thing: I'm yeah. not very good at it. Exactly. It takes months <laughs> to hone that skill. And I, you know how much limited years. time I have as it is. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, um, so, so time, yeah. if you want something done quickly, then you what you do is that you commission someone else to do it. And then there's kind of tiers in commissioning too, because 
in the way you can see, you can find the, the artist or cartographer or something that, that has the style you like and the specialization you like. Meaning like if you're into Greyhawk maps, then, then I'm the person, so to speak. And that's why 300 people are giving me money every month. So they are kind of group commissioning me to do more Greyhawk maps. But sometimes you want to go beyond that. You want a map for your game that is unique to you. And as a DM, so to speak, it's your village, your town, your inn, your evil yeah. lair, or whatever it is you want to have. Meaning, it's you it needs to find and find fill your specific needs, and that's when you come to the the ultimate conclusion. You need to get someone else to do it for you only, so to speak, and that's when you come into commission. And um, yeah, I think that's where I am for twenty twenty two or whenever at this point. But I just wanted to hear hear. Um, you got to go through steps, your, everyone yep. yourself. I don't like half-assing anything. <laughs> For <laughs> me to pull, oh, yeah, I'll use this map off of the internet now. Yeah, I can't, no. I just, I can't do that. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, And especially yeah. if you stream a game, a game then the that option runs out the door more quickly because then copyright issues come into play and, and other stuff. If you're streaming it, you're, you're publishing Absolutely. it and stuff like that, then all that comes in. And that's another big reason to either do it yourself or, or, or commission someone to do it. So, uh, Alyssa, your thoughts on initial process here? I mean, uh, yeah. Anna sounds like she got it pretty good there, but do uh, you have any suggestions in that process? Early well, on? you know, Anna did sort of nail it all. I mean, and, it, you know, at the end of the day, if it's just something down and dirty that you need, go off onto the webinet or back someone on Patreon and, you know, they're likely going to bury you in maps that you can use for something. <laughs> but yeah. if it starts to edge towards something that you need some specifics on, and I'll, I'll pick on my husband's own you know, um, sort of game setting where we had a, a city called Hubtown and it had a very specific shape, a very specific layout. And so he was like, will you draw me a map, please? And so that's <laughs> kind of what we're talking about. It's like, whether it's just for your personal use but it's got a specific need or you're going to be streaming it, therefore getting into a little bit of copyright territory, or maybe you're even going to publish thing, this thing and have yeah. illusions of publishing it for the mm -hmm. future. It's, I, I say illusions, that's negative. I mean, uh, 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 illusions of, of using it in the future, uh, like yeah. in a public you're space. you determined that, to publish it in the future. Plans, so um, or, yeah. Then at that point, you've got you've to find someone to do it for you. And I think our first subject then on this particular point, Anna, would be where do you find the talent? Assuming that yeah. you're not married to it, where do you go? <laughs> well, yeah, then then I, I guess to go to Patreon or, or some site like that and, and or Google fantasy maps and, and see what you get for styles. Um, you can go to uh, uh, Cartography uh, Guild. The, the the on on the, on the uh, um, hang on a second I need to get the, the yeah like the cartographer skill I think it's yeah. literally cartographer skill yeah I'm cartographer going to, skill I'm going to yeah. switch over to scene four and I got yep. the cartographer's guild perfect uh, yeah for, look for at that maps. they actually follow me for some bizarre reason yep mm -hmm. so, so, um, so they, there's a yeah. great site with lots of cartographers they have a special this, thread you can just register 10, for free on the forum and there's a special thread where you can say yeah. I want to have this map done and cartographers can look in there and and say i'm willing to to start thinking about it. and then you can go in to start a dialogue so to speak so that is a great great place to find lots of i i, I was very active there like 10 years ago and then i was there was a rabbit hole because they had these wonderful challenges every month and i started going in for them so hard and i won too and and i realized that oh, oh this is taking so much time so i was like no 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 <laughs> i i kind of backed out because it was such an awesome site with so many cool things that it took so much time away from yeah, they had I annual think. contests in, oh yeah they had lots categories of, mm -hmm. right yep yeah. fantastic contests and it's well run it's been for over 10 years now and and it's it's a great site for, for stuff and they have how to's and and various art cartographers present their stuff i haven't i haven't looked at it as much as i i should lately but it, it's a great place to find talent okay very good very good suggestion um any like favorites that you think of right off the top of your head for and we're talking in the fantasy genre setting indoor outdoor dungeon yeah. like you is there a go to or is there like ah this person i know is 
is good, yeah. you know, reasonable. I, this person's fantastic, but you know, two yeah. year wait list. Look, yeah, look at what they're doing. If if an okay. artist is, if you see tons and tons of fantastic Dunyan maps from from that cartographer or artist, that means that you, if you're going for for I want a jungle map or, or a map on my kingdom, it might not be the the person to go to. So try to see some uh, artists or cartographers and artists are very flexible. They can do all sorts of different styles. Others are very, they nail down one style, so to speak. So if, if you think that it's something that you want, then then go for ask. Make sure you at least ask for something that you know they have done, so to speak, something similar. Otherwise, it might be difficult for them to, to have to say no, so to speak. It, it's okay if you approach people that are professional about it because we get all sorts of proposals and we are good at saying no, but but if you approach others, that might be tricky, so yeah. yeah I, I think that's a fair point though, Anna, you know, uh, yeah, and there's there's other sources too, just obviously there's all social media. Um, yeah. DeviantArt, I find, is another good one yes. to follow yeah. people Perfect. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I found lots of people on DeviantArt yeah. uh, uh, mm -hmm. hunting for commissions for myself. Um, and I think all of them, regardless of where you go, look at what they're doing. Look at their style. Yep. And like you're, you're going to see maps or, or traditional myself. artwork that you fall in love with because some people are incredibly gifted. But ask yourself the honest question of, is this the subject matter I want, to Anna's point? And is this really the style I want because a map may look amazing, truly amazing. But if you're then going for something that is a dungeon map and this person is doing a lot of region maps, um, well, there's a disconnect there straight yeah. away. And just because you love this style and there's nothing wrong with that, don't then automatically assume that they could do any style and any subject matter. So Keep a clear mind on that one and make sure that you're looking at someone that's going to be a good fit for you. Yep. And, and then I think the next very, very big question is asking yourself, what do you really want? <laughs> that's the, the thing, because if you don't expect whoever you approach to tell you what you want, you need to have an idea of what you want. Okay. The problem with it is that you can't be too rigid meaning it needs to have structure and content and, and, and stuff like that, but you, you can't nail down everything, so to speak. So it's, that's, the, that's the, the balancing act being you have to give them whoever, and now we come into the next topic once you, but you have to, before you even approach someone, you have to have an idea of what you want, but you also have to have an open mind and realize it will become a dialogue with whoever you approach. And that is a very delicate thing to learn, so to speak. So, so, so expect dialogue, but also expect that person to, especially if it's me you approach, to come with a barrage of questions. And, and, well, let's and, spend yeah. five minutes on this mm -hmm. because this, yes, is, this, is, this is the very valid point that you're raising. Anna. Yeah. Um, prepare in advance. Let's say for the sake of argument, you've got three people that you want to hit up. Uh, that you really love all of their work. But yeah. it, and it doesn't really matter even if it's one or 21. What is it you want? Now, it, you know, and I'm going to give you an example. And all of my examples, by the way, I give today are real world examples, but I'm going to obfuscate them a little bit so no one gets embarrassed. Don't go to someone and say, I want a medieval map of Pluto. Because that makes no sense. <laughs> yep. there's, there's more questions that I am going to have on my side than you have even put on the table at this point. So yep. honestly, sit back and write down. And honestly, it shouldn't be more than a paragraph. And probably it should just be a few sentences. What is it that you are after? And it may be a dungeon map. It may be a city map. It may be a region map. But you should be able to describe it. You should be able to visualize it. Because if you're already approaching someone, then you have a specific vision in mind. You may not know how it's going to come out and there's going to be a collaboration process. But you need to be able, I call it the elevator speech version. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to articulate at least what it is and, and the size of it, for example, because if I, if I went to Anna and I said, Anna, I, I need a map of a country, please. I've given her nothing. Okay, she knows it's a country. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, but it can be Monaco or it can be, be 
China, so to speak, in, in size. So yeah. And, and and yeah, exactly. Is she drawing this thing four inches by four inches? 82 inches by 82. Yes. Like what style are we talking about here? Are yep. we talking about like sort of the semi-isometric Lord of the Rings style? Are we mm -hmm. talking top down? Are we talking about computer graphics? You you need to be able to write some bullet points down of this is what I'm after. Yep. Because when you go to someone like Anna, she's going to ask and she's not going to be able to give you any details until you at least get these bare basics down. Yeah. Anna, and you, do you want to elaborate? Oh, yeah, because you mentioned something really important that I think is a very important bit by itself. It's that the end purpose, meaning is this a map that you're going to use in a VTT and that's it, so to speak, for your own private games? Or, or is this something that is going to be published in a book? Is it something that is going to be potentially printed on a big poster map or, or, or something like that? So the end use of, of, of whatever comes out of it, so to speak, of the image, that is a very important mini. That sets the, the resolution, the, the, the amount of detail needed, the, the, the graphic formats and stuff like that, and things that need to be taken into account when you, before you start. And that sets a big, big, if it's something that just needs to be cheap graphics to put on a VTT, not that particularly, but if it's going to be printed on a, on a 40 by 60 inch poster map, it needs to be way bigger in scope and resolution and stuff. And the price might be five times higher just to accommodate that big publishing size. And also don't be afraid of, of having to go through this because there are publishers that approach me and had no clue of what they want really that way. They say, oh, we want this cool map kind of thing. <laughs> and, and we probably want it in a book. And yeah, then after two weeks into the, pro well, we probably wanted poster map too. Can, can we have that too? And then I think we, yeah, we can, could we just have it in black and white and, and color and, and whatever? And they kind of add on the things down the line. And that's the other thing is that you need to figure out where do you want this, so to speak? What And that is something that you need to have nailed down when you approach. So your end product, both the physical product or the digital product and the potential use of it, so to speak, down the line, especially if you're a fledging DM who, who publish things on the internet and you realize, now well, I want to do a cool PDF series of this, or I want to have it possible of posting it as a poster, printing it as a poster in the future. So, so these are things that need to be taken into design. You, you don't, it doesn't make things automatically three times more expensive or whatever, but it's something that needs to be taken into account when you start making a project. Uh, so here's my layman's question back to both yeah? of you. Is it better for someone maybe to start out with a small project or two and get them developed first and then get a feel for what they actually want? Like for me, should I get maybe, you know, a, a, a keep map done or, or a small village map done first and then go to for the larger project uh, instead of going right at, toward the larger project right at the beginning because I don't know what I'm doing. As an example. Lisa, would well, you want to take so, it first? Yep. Yeah, and I'm going to maybe be a little bit controversial on this. Um, okay. Because I, I almost want to say, it, in a sense, it doesn't matter, but in a way it does. But there's a certain amount of onus and responsibility on both sides. And okay. here's why. Because from your side, Gassamba, um, you could go all in. You could go all in with a plethora of different maps and, you know, big maps, big setting and so on and so forth. But your responsibility is one of then you've got to be there to be able to describe what you're after, constantly be in touch with the artist that's working on this or group of artists that are working on this to ensure that everything is on track and that they, you know, hitting your vision for it. Um, if you're not, then things are going to start to run to risk it's a bigger budget that you're going to be obviously dealing with and there's going to be risk because of it and the more people you involve that that's going to obviously have risk but i also think that the the biggest risk there is who you are working with it would be one thing to go to anna and say anna will you do me 30 maps now, she's probably going to say, oh, oh what? I Maybe in three years' time. <laughs> but, you know, it, in this fictional sort of world, you know, Anna, you could trust. Anna is a professional. You know, Anna has a long reputation of being trustworthy and delivering. Now, if you are, just, if you found some random schmo on DeviantArt that you have yeah. no relationship with, right. then yes, doing bite-sized commissions 
warming up the relationship. I've actually done that. I've done that with colorists. Mm -hmm. um, I brought them on board. I want to test them out. I want to gauge how we're working together and um, get make sure we've got the payment thing going down. Yeah. And when we have that relationship, I start to ramp it up somewhat. So I think it really depends on who you're working with and yeah. yourself, your own bandwidth and capability to keep up with it. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that's really wise. There's there's one other thing I want to <clears throat> to add to it. I think is important is if you if you intend it to be a bigger project in the end, or you desire, let's say you you want a whole country, where, and you want a country with like three cities and a couple of, of other locations, and 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 that's the ultimate goal. I want to map my kingdom with the big cities and 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 a few other castles and dungeons and stuff. Then I think you should convey what the ultimate goal is. Meaning, I would love to. This is the whole idea, not right away but and then you should zero in on say okay let's start with this castle map and the, the the accompanying dungeon under it so to speak as a first project but i would love to if someone approached me and say but i my ultimate goal is to map the whole kingdom because what i can do is that make sure that especially in the, the, my process is that when i map it i can place it in in roughly a location so it's already pre prepped to be inserted into a bigger setting so you kind of prepared to take the future steps. And I think that's that's really good way. So, so so mention what the ultimate goals are, both what how you want to publish it, but also say that I want to be able, I would love to have the rest of the kingdom mapped and, and the area and the big city and stuff down the line, so to speak. And you can kind of make plans. And there comes the other big that I've seen a couple of people mention in, in chat that is really important, time. When the time frame for a project. I've been, that's the, the most recent, most times I say no, it's because I can't make it that quickly. There are many publishers who approach me and I've happened four or five times the last five years approach me and say oh can 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 you make this map in like a month or two and and i wouldn't even even be able to research in in that time so to speak and i my pipeline now i'm busy until like may next year so so before may next year i can't even take on the project and and so that is something that and i'm i'm probably not the only one especially if you're established professional artist or something you have a pipeline of 6 to 8 months often and i bet that a lot of really big ones and and one of the reasons for that is not that we sit and have every day lined out and we have 40 hours of work or more per week but i know that i keep small openings because i have customers like Kobo Press and others <clears throat> that I know will bring me a, a project now and then and say that, oh, we need to change this and fix this for a VDT or whatever. Things like that pops in every six or eight weeks. So I keep occasional weeks open simply because of it. And and if if they're not filled up by a customer or, or something like that, I sit and do more Greyhawk maps. That's why I love to have Patreon as a filler for stuff like that. But it's it's and and but you have to respect that pipelines. That's why taking artists that are you can find on DeviantArt art or, or something because there's a lot of, of artists that would love to have a commission and they could start working on it instantly and and love to do it so so and they are in many ways as talented as as, as I am or, or Alyssa or anyone else so to speak so so talent and and how busy you are unfortunately doesn't always add up yeah okay right well, I, I would uh, to expound upon that a little bit because yeah, it, it, this do. almost goes back uh, this has a toe in the waters of preparing your elevator speech for what you want it's yeah. absolutely related mm -hmm. when you do approach someone assume that they have other things going on um yeah. you know and, as anna indicated she's booked out into the middle of next year so am i jared that we had on the last show he is too, I guarantee it. Mm -hmm. And just assume that most people have got something going on. Don't go to someone like with the, I need it now and you've got nothing else happening because odds on you're going to be disappointing. And honestly, if I'm going to be really candid, it's a little disrespectful. It's not professional, okay? So I would approach them with the, are you available for commissions? Some aren't, just period, okay? Are you available for commissions? Do you have a sense of when you would be available? By the way, Anna right now would want to know what you're talking about. That's where your elevator speech comes in. 
she's going to need to know what you're dealing with because she's right. I'm booked out until June of next year, solidly. But if someone comes to me and says, hey, can you draw me some dungeon maps? And they're going to go on some dice that we're doing. You know, they're going to be dead simple. And they give me a project spec. I could sit down and go, I can squeeze that in. Mm-hmm. But unless you're prepared for Anna to understand what you're asking for, she can't make that judgment call, right? And so now the kind of conversation yeah. is just at a loggerheads. So assume that people are busy at least for a few months. If they're not, kudos. Great, right? It's, it's good for you. But plan out at least two or three months. See if they're available for commissions, because they might not be. Be prepared to give them enough information so they can understand how much time they're going to need to dedicate to it. And if they can squeeze it in, because even if they are booked up, they might be able to get you in the slot, just like Anna was saying. Yep. That's why you need to know up front what you actually want this person to do for you. And, and secret weapon in that is that if you send the elevator pitch right away, if I see a pitch that is well phrased, someone who knows what they want exactly and they have an idea and, and they can send me a really good pitch and, and saying, and we have all this information available if you want to and stuff. If someone realized that, then I'm so eager to work with them that I w- might work extra 10 hours for four weeks straight just to, to squeeze that in because so, so to get the right uh, research and the meaning if I can get the right information out of, of someone that would make me want to work with them that is to me as important as money in some uh, no, ways you're 100%, I've, Anna. Yeah, you're 100% I've said, right. yeah I've said no to way more uh, offers of, of, of commissions be, due to lack of information than lack of money way more Having so, both yeah. sides be clear yeah. and professional on communication yep. is honestly one of the key elements here. And mm-hmm. it started very early on in what Anna yep. and I are talking about. You knowing what you want and being able to communicate that immediately yep. gets whatever artist, and it doesn't have mm-hmm. to just be a cartographer, no, yep. almost on your side. It's like this person knows what they want. Mm-hmm. They know how to communicate it. Yep. I don't have to now go digging it. If I have to dig it now, like I want a medieval map of Pluto. If I have to start <laughs> digging so into this now, yep. then what is this entire thing going to be like? This is yep. just going to be painful for me. Yep. No, I can't do it. That, yep. That's what you're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I have uh, one perfect example of, of, of two that was really good proposals. And 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 uh, I, I had uh, Hans Cummings was one that, that he, he, he made some, some awesome books and stuff. He'd written books. He, he was kind of just a little bit vague, just very polite, asking me, send me an email, can you ask, and, and, and send me some links to who he was, so to speak, and just ask very politely, are you open for commission? That was how it started. And then after that, he, he sent me, a, I think it was like a six, two or no, two or three pages of PDF with inspirational stuff, the map he had, ideas and inspirational stuff. And that brief was so good. So I just said, yes, I'm going to do it right away just because it was so good. We hadn't discussed price and I was like, whatever, that came later. And, 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 but I just, I basically said, yes, I want to do it because that's the thing. You need to want the artist to do it kind of cool thing. And, and so on. So, so spent, and, but it doesn't need, and a lot of people realize it doesn't need to look graphically good. Something's drawn on some inspirational text, some, some desires and ideas, meaning I want to hear that, that someone can think inspirationally about it and inspire me to want to do it that's the key and then have some napkin drawing scribbles on a napkin that they take a picture of we could do an example of that anna i mean bring up if you can uh the example description labeled map legend there's a label for you um because this is exactly the type of napkin sort of thing that you're talking about yeah where someone asked me for, uh, not that one. I mean, someone did ask me for that one. Um, <laughs> but go. this one yep. right here. I mean, mm-hmm. this is the napkin sketch yep, that I exactly. was talking about. They yep. said this pretty early on in the conversation. It's like, we're after a city. It's shaped like this. Yep. We want it to be a full page spread. Um, in fact, I think they said it was a double page spread, this one. These are the key POIs that I need. By the way, 
not many people approach me and say, these are the POIs that I want. This is, this is a company that knows upfront exactly the city that they want, exactly the size. They told me the population size. They already knew which POIs I would have to capture and where roughly everything else would exist. I said yes to these guys because they were so organized. Mm -hmm. And this yeah. is what they sent me. It's just a napkin sketch, like Anna said. But yep. you already, you're taking the guesswork out of this. I don't have to extract it from you now, yep. which takes time. Mm -hmm. And and all this initial discussion is very important because then we come into the other one of the other serious topics once you've had the, the basic conversation and that's the unfortunate part of the price so to speak that the, the two the two major there the are three major hiccups one is the information bit and and the second is time and the third is money meaning that that's the the the, the big hiccups on, on the project so to speak so so yeah well, no 100 percent related to that i mean this yeah. all kind of snowballs forward how yeah. many times anna have you had someone approach you and say something along the lines of, I'm going to use a city map as an example for myself. Hey, Alyssa, will you draw me a city? How much will it cost? Yep. Oh, yeah. Because yep. I, I have no details. I have no details yep. in there. Yep. I don't know what style you want. I don't know how big it is. I don't know if you're doing a single page, double page, or any yep. other variation mm -hmm. thereof. Yep. I don't know how much labor you want to put me to put into the details. I don't know if you want it black yep. and white or color. Yep. So I, I'm going to give you a range of, four hundred dollars to thousands and thousands because you've I, given me nothing else to yeah. go off there yeah and and that, that's the thing yeah and i i do exactly the same but what i do is that i most of my projects are within the range of two to five thousand dollars so that's the answer i will get and and meaning they then and also i I set on a very high initial price because if, if they have that idea of, of money is the, the essential bit and they are not willing to inspire me right away, then it's something that, okay, it might be a lucrative thing. So, so I give them a high initial price just to make sure that, that at least I can get the money from it, so to speak, if, if the con discussion continues. So, but I guess so, at this particular yeah. stage of the conversation, it, it's really, you know, if you are approaching someone for a commission, yeah and you don't give them enough information up front, mm -hmm. what you're going to get back is, let's say from Anna, yeah. I don't know, two to $5,000. Yeah. And that's not going to help you budget your Kickstarter or anything exactly. else, right? Yeah. Now, if you went to Anna and said, actually, I just need a quarter page thing. It's going to yep. be like a couple of hundred miles across and it's got one city in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. Anna's yep. probably going to look at that and go, well, it might take me four hours to do so. Yeah, and her can... reaction is going to be completely different. You've got yep. to be able to get, at least give some information up front. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that goes with most artists, so to speak. If you can inspire them, give them them something to, to get their mind going right away, so to speak, at least then you can get a very honest answer and, and half of the budget discussion is done already with a good brief and and you had that initial rather than just jump on initial right away just saying that oh how much money do you want for it so 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 before my my minimum was a thousand now i'm often up to two thousand for minimum for projects that i have no clue of so to speak exactly that, yeah. and i can, before we move the conversation too far yeah. on and i don't want people to be intimidated by this but i had a particularly effective communication sent to me just this yep. week and because some if you could bring up the example description riverton pitch this is something that this is a real life pitch that someone has sent me and it's actually got a few pages in it now normally i don't want to read multiple pages please don't send me your manuscript uh, that, <laughs> yeah. I, I, i'm not going to try and deduce from I have your someone who said an author want. i'm not going to mention name who who, who who said oh can you map my, my the world i'm using for my books and i said sure we can t start talking about it and i said oh can you i can just send you my was it like seven or eight books or something and 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 i i checked on amazon and it was like 2,500 pages and I, I sent back and say it would take me three months to read that and I want $2,000 just to do it just to and read all your books and that's take, a fair response yeah. yeah and I never no heard from back from him again well so, of course you yeah. wouldn't yeah don't yeah. be that client don't yep. be that client <laughs> exactly. Anna does not want to sit there <laughs> reading 
tomes and tomes and tomes of information, yep. 99% of which is going to be irrelevant to the project at hand, you haven't effectively communicated. At, yep. Or if you're going to ask Anna to do this so she can deduce I, I the I might be more finicky her. than a lot of other artists and stuff, so I shouldn't be scared. You might find someone who would love to send read your books and, and, and make it. So I'm, I'm just speaking for myself here. Who no, no, but it, 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 yeah. it's fair across yeah. the board, just because it's a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. Don't freaking send your artist a tome to read when really at the end of the day less than a paragraph is going to describe the project yeah. you know just mm -hmm. don't do it yeah uh, it's a waste of their time it just yeah. is it's not respectful or yeah. pay them for mm -hmm. it uh yeah. this riverton thing that i got sent this week and go somebody i don't know if you're capable of scrolling through it sure it wasn't actually that long the client apologized for sending this it, it, it basically it put a huge amount of work into it mark thank you very much and he described what the project was going to be and i think around the Thank second far. page um yeah if you go down i think it's, it's the second page it actually gets into the first city map that he's got this is basically what he's wants and it's going to be based on venice the minute i saw this i was like okay this a client actually understands visually what he's after and then if you scroll to page three he kind of explains a little bit yeah like that but more like this it's going to be bigger and so he, uh, this is a guy that has a true vision. He's been able to explain his project, the size of this thing. And he actually, in email too, he was like, I'm kickstarting this next year. I would need it finished by this point in time. Great. I understand your schedule. I understand if I can do it. You've already told me you want a big map of Venice, so I can understand that. He's told me the style that he wants this done in, so I can understand the, uh, the type of approach I'm going to make, uh, uh, you know, a take on this um and ultimately end of the day i was like yeah. oh hell yes i was able to give him a good quote uh he actually increased my quotes and said i'll do this as a stretch goal and then maybe we'll do this if i don't hit the stretch goal this yep. is an organized person yep this is this is a person that has a schedule a vision and a stretch goal in mind he understands budgets and everything and schedule and i'm like yeah, I'm on board. I'm excited. So this is a Kickstarter. This, I think he's gonna. He is. He's kickstarting this next yep. year. Um, it, it's 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 gonna be a five E game called Polite Society or something. And I, I mean, I, if if we end up doing it together, I'm gonna stream this thing because it's gonna be a hell of oh, amount cool. of fun. Yeah. But the point is, he really gave me a great mm -hmm. brief. Yep. I mean, perfect exactly and that inspires you to it's something you want to work on because it, it's it sounds like a very interesting project by someone and and that that the, the chemistry of, of how if you can inspire be inspired by each other and you can kind of work together and you get that and that's something that at least I feel something I can feel very early if I get it or not so to speak and and that is something and now it comes to something that is a very difficult topic and, and one of one of the main reasons that that I get hired and Alyssa and, and other artists gets hired is that we get hired by people who write stuff basically because who can't draw that much because there's some multi-talented people in the RPG industry that can do everything do their art and and do their writing or whatever but and I most, hate them <laughs> <laughs> no but it's I, I wish I was that kind of person but so so and that's one thing that I think I, I need to as an artist or cartographer we need to understand that they hire us just in because they can't do what we can't do so so that's one of the things that so, so one of the, the i think really responsible things to do as an artist is to try and and pick the brain of the person or the publisher who, who's or brains depending on if it's one or several people to get to what they want because often they don't have really the vocabulary or the the visual thinking in order to ask what they want so often what you can do is if if you especially if you're given a good brief like this you can sketch down or give them some examples and say is this what you're after or is this the style or something and all of a sudden yes we want to look at like oh but often you say no 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 that's not what you want because they don't know what they want but if you show them something they can tell you right away we don't want that, so to speak. So, so that's the the other thing is that you, they communicate to you in in verbal or writing, and you communicate back in verbal and and drawing and and 
visual stuff that that a lot of people can't express themselves visually but they still have very firm opinions if they like it or not which is is good and and that's something that i kind of i've learned to to not only respect but actually like because that's how i make my money if everybody has my had my idea of, of and 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 nerdiness about maps i would be out of a job so so it's it's kind of good that people don't think as much about maps that i do and i have to respect that so to speak and and i can thrive on it but i also have to understand it that and and i think that every every artist out there who, who wants to make money doing it, it realize that it's the customer's needs and the customer's desires that are essential when you do commission map if you just do maps for your own game then every, it's the way you want or the highway so to speak but as soon as soon as you start asking for someone else's money when you do it it's their style if they want to have pink banners and stuff mm -hmm. then it's pink banners but you might tweak the pinkinish a little bit and and stuff and so on <laughs> and, and ask them twice if it's something that you think is horrible like do you really want this or or send a quick quick and dirty version and with pink stuff if they ask for it and then they will say no and and then you can get rid of the pink ones so, and overdo the pinkinish and then send them a pinky thing that looks so pink that it's kind of crazy or overboard and then so, so you can tweak it but the important thing is respect the client to some degree and realize it's their will that that pays the bills so to speak so, well and you're raising yeah. a couple of points now anna and they're yeah. all valid because we're going to talk about commission rates mm -hmm. we're going to talk about money as yeah. part of it yes. we're going to talk about contracts and we're going to talk about, okay, so now this person's working on your project. How do you ensure that they're actually going to come up with like what you need them to do? Because yeah. you're paying for it now. But before we get into those conversations, Anna raised a couple of very valid points um, from the point of view of um, not only what they're going to give back, but how now is your artist or cartographer communicating back with you? You've approached them, you've asked them if they're available for commissions, you've told them what you're after, and let's assume that they're on board. The conversation is going to advance. It's going to advance into one of budgets, and it's going to advance into one of contracts, and it's going to get into the work itself. But do, I want to just underscore for a moment, if you approached Anna, Actually, Anna would be a very, very bad example because she would never respond this way. So I'm going to call her <laughs> B. Anna. If you approached B. Anna and said, hey, can you draw me a region map? And B. Anna responded with, yeah, no problem, $2,000. You haven't actually told her anything. You haven't told her anything about what your needs are. She hasn't asked you I would say that's a red flag. Just be careful, okay? Especially if you're hitting up people on DeviantArt and the Cartographer's Guild. When you go to them, how they respond to you, and I'm not just talking about, yes, of course I'll do it for you, Kermit Flail. I mean, that's great, and everyone's excited, and you want to get your city drawn or your region drawn or whatever. Kermit Flail, that's funny. What they actually send back to you as a response like should be a flag as to whether this is going to be successful or not. And I'll give, I'll give an example. Um, like if I approach someone to do some character art for me and I tell, and I, I, I mean, I've been in the business a long time, so I'm going to tell them what size they need. I'm going to tell them if I need it color or not. I already know that their style fits. Um, and, you know, and I'll tell them pretty much when I need it by and art on it's like whenever. So I, I give them a lot of information if I didn't give them that information and they're just like, sure, then I'm not going to get exactly what I need that out of the gate. If they responded, yes, I can do this. Tell me a little bit more about your character and their visuals. Tell me a little bit more. About, I, I'm, I'm probably going to do a sketch up front and send it to you. This is a person who's a pro. They understand it. And I, that I'm going to every single question they throw back at me is a sign that it's going to get closer and closer to my vision. And I'm sure Gasomba didn't just get some like schmo with 30,000 followers on Twitch and say, hey, will you draw me a keep, please, with some people fighting in front of it? Yeah. I'm sure that the conversation went a little bit deeper than that to get it closer to his vision. If you don't get those questions back from your perspective artist, yeah. may not be, it, it might be a great match, but the result will not be exactly what you're after. And you should accept that. The budget might be less because of it. Yeah. 
So that's a great point. I actually had a liaison, Stella Luna, who uh, worked with me with that as well, because she knew, you know, she knew him intimately through her one of her best friends, and that's how we yep. got that connection. And then I said, mm -hmm. I want this, I want this, I want this, you know, and and hit hit all dot all the I's, crossed all the T's. So I'm assuming it's the same way in cartography. You know, the more detail that you give them, the better. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think the more detail going out to the artist. But the more that the artist then comes back with, because I'm sure Anna then says, okay, I understand what you have there, but doesn't then jump into the work. Uh, you know, Anna, well, I'm sure, first, has I, questions. I will, uh, yeah, exactly. It's often a barrage of, of questions. And and I, I will be specific. Say, let's say um, people often ask me like area maps or like country maps or setting maps. So, so I will simply say, if it's say like a country map, I say, I want a description of the country on one page. And then I want each like province or settlement to have like a paragraph and meaning five or six pages. And, and I don't want to know, and now I'm paraphrasing Len here because that, that was the most kind of awesome, cute, wonderful way of, of doing it. When, when I asked, and I talked to him to, to map Len or Isle and I said, and so, please tell me what what something about the island what they look like and stuff and he was like thinking for a few seconds well you see that town there had a cleric of a very unusual god and he was so high he was like 13th level and 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 that is perfectly good if you're going to run the campaign there or stuff but it doesn't give me anything and and that's the thing you need to learn to think like a cartographer to a little bit of degree meaning what is the landscape look like and and what's the biome I mean, is it desert is it temperate is it is it demon inv infested swampland is it something like that it's meaning you need both the mundane bits and the overall picture and is it a rich fertile land or dry old poor people that live there and can barely scratch a living out of the dry dirt and, and stuff like that. Meaning these kind of things that, that, that an author will put in a novel, for instance, that would very much tell you what the landscape looked like. But if you don't think from a landscape perspective, a lot of people don't realize it. They, they will give you the, the elevation curves, but that only tells you so much but to get like the story of how is how fertile it is and what are the farmers growing and stuff like that will tell me way more. So often it's interesting details that doesn't seem to be really into geography. Like what are the, if there are the hunters, what do they hunt there? What kind of wildlife lives there? That tells me a lot about what type of terrain it is. So, so it's kind of esoteric, weird details that can be really interesting. So, Minnie's so, trying and, to get your attention, by the way. Okay. Oh, yes. Yeah, she needs some more treats here. So that's good. <laughs> yep. I try to, yeah, we need to get Minnie some treats. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's great points. Um, yep. So uh, Alyssa put together a great checklist here. Um, yep. Give... I know Peck's had a question and uh, talking about negotiating a budget. I'm assuming we'll we'll want to talk about that, how that uh, actually transpires. I, I think budget budget is probably the next thing. Okay. It, it, it yeah. may be one of the things that um, you, as a prospective client, will ask right from the get-go. Uh, you know, how much yeah. do you charge? Um, having a little bit of information wrapped around that helps the artist come back to you with something and not all artists by the way have rate sheets i know some do but depending on what you're asking for it may just blow the rate sheet out of the water okay and the more you can tell them up front the more that they understand whether it's a rate sheet that they have up here um yeah. or or something written down the more that the two of you can come into alignment about what are we talking about on a scale of effort and time yeah. here and and effort and time is money that's yeah. what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you may ask at the very beginning or you may ask partway through the conversation with them. Money is going to come up now. Elephants in the room. You may be one of those people that doesn't have money and you want it to do it for exposure. Let's come back to that a little mm -hmm. bit further down yeah. the road. Let's just say that you're one of those people that do want to pay for other people's time. And I hope you are. Um the money the budget is going to come up. It, it, it just is. And I think, honestly, if you approach someone like myself or Anna and you tell us what you want and we agree that we want to actually do the work and we agree upon some kind of timeline, etc., cetera, uh, Anna or I are going to come back with some kind of cost estimate. And I, I mean, Anna, I don't know what your thoughts are, but that's kind of been the most successful path for me. Yeah. Um, I've had one client that doesn't want to pay 
what I would charge, but they're such a huge name, I've sucked it up anyway because they're such a huge name and that's my choice. But yeah. otherwise, most of the time, I'll come back with a price point yeah. and be, just be mature as a client. If it's beyond your budget, you have two possible reactions to it. One is, thanks very much. It is a little bit beyond my budget range. Go off and find someone else. No one is going to get offended by that. That's okay. Mm -hmm. The other is, um, okay, um, you know, can we simplify it? Can we make it smaller? Can we get, you know, to, you know, bring the budget down a little bit? Um, that's an okay conversation to have as well. And this is the negotiation. And I, I, yeah. I personally don't get into <clears throat> negotiations much. I've got to be honest with you. What about you? Not not that often, but one of the things that I think, and, and I think that as a client, you fall into to two main categories. Mine, one is like you're the DM who just wants the coolest map in the world for your own game. That's the minimum client. Or or you like if one fledgling little startup and say, I've, I'm, I've been DMing and gaming and I'm, I'm dying to get something published on DMs Guild or, or I want to to try my luck at doing a Kickstarter or something. Maybe they, they something they they simply finance out of their own pocket or worse, maybe even their own credit cards or, or something just to, to, to feel like um, I want to be get into the publication. I want to be someone in the RPG industry just for fun or to test it out or it's my life desire, so to speak, and they hire you. And I have a great respect for that. So, so, so if you're that kind of person and also say that my budget is like $500, that's what I can spend on this first project and be open about that. And, and because that kind of limits, meaning then instead of then they spending a lot of time trying to, to get all the info out of me or give me info, I might say that, no, that's out of my budget or, or, or I'm not interested in doing something that cheap or, or, or that small, so to speak. That, but I will probably not say that because I've done things for $100 for charity, and, and but we get to that too. So I think it's it's important to be. The, the other end of the, the, the client spectrum is is like a big publisher like Paiso or, 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 or Cobalt Press even that is like a mid-size or, or Troll Lord or, 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 or Frog God or someone like that, that that are working in the hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. They might have a budget of a two, 300,000 for a project. And, and for them, it's not so much if it costs 2,000 or 3,000 dollars would not be the big thing for them it might be time that is the biggest thing so so if they can squeeze it down to four months instead of six months it might be doing so 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 i think money is it's a very different discussion for someone a dm who just wants to make the coolest thing ever for his friends or or, or for the, the game or a publisher who simply say we have a huge kickstarter that we're going to run next year and we hope to bring in a quarter of a million dollars for it and we want a map part of that and and meaning then all of a sudden then then yeah then and and then money might not be the object at all so to speak it might then time becomes much more of an issue so so for some clients some discussion money is everything because they might have a budget of, of eight hundred dollars and and if they want to give 400 to, to do the map part and the rest for some character portraits or whatever it is so so i will not get offended if someone even asks me but the the, the truth is, the harder truth is that my time is, is so limited that I've chosen to work on my Patreon projects and for Greyhawk mm -hmm. stuff rather than keep doing these for hundreds yeah, of dollars. Cut, yeah, makes yeah. Sense. And, and so I kind of cut that out of the picture. So what I do mostly for commissions are big projects that will take, that will run over six months or something like that. And, and that brings in four or $5,000 or, or something in that range and then work on Patreon the rest. But I've also done small Greyhawk projects and that's something I'm going to talk about at the end here and and for for like 50 bucks or 100 bucks tweaking my Greyhawk map because that's something that is fun I can do it in an hour or, or, or two hours or something like that on and off but so don't be I, I will not be offended I'm, I'm 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 actually it's it's wonderful to be asked about every project so to speak and I'm way more offended about people that just think that I can just drop everything out of a hat and just work for them so big publish bigger publishers have offended me way more than 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 small DMs who just want something cool for 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 the, they I never get offended by someone who, who can't afford a big budget but people who yell at me because I can't do it fast enough that, that offends me way more so to speak so so, so I think that's really yeah. really fair and uh, yeah. and uh, you're right it's it's uh, there, there was a level of 
I'm going to call it almost respect. And if someone comes yeah. in, assumes you've got nothing going on. Hey, yeah. I want you to map Pluto for me. Mm -hmm. um, let's go. Um, yeah. And it's going to have a negative reaction to that. But if you approach someone like Anna and myself with, this is my timeline. This is what I'm after. And by the way, I've got a budget of $50. That's okay, guys. Yeah. That's, that's okay. We may not be able to actually do anything for you for fifty dollars. We yeah. might, you know, I'm just going to talk about that. But at the end of the day, I understand now what you're after mm -hmm. and your budget. Yeah, and I can probably refer you to someone who will be very happy to work with you. And we yeah. only do referrals to people mm -hmm. that are going to do good work. Mm -hmm. So it's it's okay to shop around too. You know, my husband actually approached an artist to do some character artwork and got hit by a whopping like six thousand dollars for a headshot or something like that. And my husband was like, thank you. Little out of my budget range. I appreciate it. Appreciate your yep. time. Yep. That was it. No hard feelings. Just move on. You know, mm -hmm. it, uh, budgets can be an uncomfortable subject, but if you understand what you want to spend, sometimes you might even push that a little bit for the person that you're working with. Yeah. Um, and you give the person you're talking to enough information to, be able to give you a price point, then you can assess just honestly if you want to pay that or not. And yep. everyone's happy. <clears throat> yeah. And and you brought up earlier a really good thing that might come out of this discussion is to cut corners or, or like how do we minimize the cost, so to speak, and, and, and make the same project done cheaper. And, and there are ways that I do around it. And, and one of them is to, instead of going in for like full 3D kind of cool thing, and I just make some quick and dirty work in Photoshop. And, and I tell them that it will look probably 70, 80% as good as it, the real thing, so to speak. But then you will get a top-down map in that scale and resolution, and you will never get anything else from the project. Meaning if you want to do something fancier down the line, we have to start from scratch. But if you've done it right from the beginning, and, and I really modeled it in 3D, meaning then we can do isometric maps, we can zoom in and do detailed work on one area, we can do winter versions, summer versions, also we can do video flyovers, all sorts of cool <laughs> stuff that publishers want down the line. And that will be a main part because then I can add that in a lot easier later on. So what you usually cut away are different options down the line, so to speak. Then they will be completely separate projects starting from scratch. And, and as publishers and others have often a hard time understanding because what they do, they simply assume that what I do as a cartographer is paint a pretty picture of, of, of a map and that's it, so to speak, but it's way more to it. I usually, my analogy is like investing in good cartography is like investing in a rule system. That's something you will use over and over in different versions for the entirety of the product range, so to speak, of that setting. And, and so it's more like my, like the rule system. It's not something you develop one book or one image. It's something you invest a lot of time and money and effort into, and then you can reuse the same data and, and so on in many different incarnations over a long time. I got a difficult question here from M5 tie-in. Yeah. Okay. We writers may not understand how complex what we're asking for is. How do you break down complexity versus cost to the writer? That, yeah, that's really tricky. And, and, and I usually go into to three parts of it. One is the landscape bit, so to speak, meaning trying to think about the landscape, make real world examples and saying, okay, they want to desert something and then start thinking, okay, what kind of elements are in so on. So break down the landscape. That's step one. Step two is to do who lives there. What do they do? What are the cities? The, are there roads? Are there flying things? Are there spaceports or, or, or stuff like that? Meaning that the, 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 the inhabitants and the monsters and, and, and everything that inhabits the landscape. And the third bit is how is this going to be used? Published in a book? What's the format of the book? Printed on posters and stuff like that. Because that, to me, those are the three main things that that really affects the, the scope of the project, so to speak. And then take each of these pieces and break them down and try to understand 
and tell, convey how that will do. Meaning, do you want videos of this? It's going yeah. to be a lot of promotional material that's going to be used. And do you want a top-down isometric? It's going to be illustrative on the front of the book, or do you just want that picture with a line art map on the second page in your novel and that's it, so to speak? The, that, that will be my approach to, to try and, and, and explain to, to, to someone who, who, who normally works with words to, to what I do. What do you think, Alyssa? Well, and most both people don't know, by the way, you know, how complex something is going to be or necessarily what the end result is going to be. Yeah. That's OK, too. You've got yep. past the elevator speech version. Mm -hmm. You've got a relationship going with this person yeah. now. It may be in its early stages. And this is why I said earlier, expect to get some questions back. Yes. Anna, everything that Anna just said is her questions back to you. What she's doing now is pulling those extra little strings of information. And I do the same thing. My subject matter is different than Anna's and my tools are different, but I have a similar process. I'm going to come back to you with some now additional questions. Sometimes, honestly, I'll give you three different maps. I'll show you three different maps that I've done in the past and say, do you want this type of complexity, this okay. or this? Mm -hmm. And I will literally show you. And they're three very different uh, approaches and that will, at least for me, give me a, a sense of what waters are we plunging into uh, here. And yep. as long as you're dealing with someone who's done this a lot, which is why I said expect to get some questions back. If you don't, there's going to be some rocky roads ahead. Yep. Because when I do come back to you and I am asking you questions, I'm basically giving myself a framework to work within. If I say it's going to be a $1,600 map, I've, I've now assumed that even if you get a little bit more detail than I was expecting, or maybe throw in a POI at a certain point that I, what I didn't know about, you know, that ultimately I've got that built in for, I've got that accommodated for this. I've yep. got some wiggle room mm -hmm. in there, yep. but that's when you should expect something back from your artist. If you don't, they're not building in that wiggle room. They're not really pulling those details out of you. And there are details. And if they're not pulling those details out of you, they're going to come out once they're doing the work mm -hmm. uh, or at the end of the project. And that's too late. That's yeah. too late at that stage. I hope that was some good answers to, to the question. So, yeah. I'm sorry, but I can't stop chuckling because we're getting spammed with Kermit flails on the Cannon Fire Discord now, Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. no. oh, that is so cool. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to be honest with you, though. I've done it because I have been the person commissioning the work. I've got caught up. This is my planet. This, this is my yep. writing. These are oh, my awesome. characters. Yep. I, I am, and I get caught up in that. And I'm like, I'm Kermit flailing over it. Yep. Like, yeah, I will yep. come along. Yeah, you get uh, Kermit Flail and, 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 and Feed the Dog is the, the theme of the show. So that awesome. was awesome. And I think I've given Mini enough treats for, 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 so, for right now. So, yeah. So M5, I hope that uh, answered your question. And Pex, I think yep. I, I answered your financial question as well. Uh, well and so related to this then, um, I think the next subject, at least from my perspective, is like early draft of the work what what yeah. to expect and when and if you're not getting it oh hell throw up a red flag okay i don't care if it's traditional artwork or a cartographer that you're working with uh, we should talk about contracts at some point and maybe yeah. we can actually sort of deal with that but like one way of actually ensuring that the project is pointing in the right direction from both sides of the camp here is to actually do some early drafts to do progress shots to actually for me I, you know i'll actually draw sometimes six different city shapes with different geographic features if the client doesn't particularly know themselves i'll extract yeah. it in a visual sense uh Gassamba, i actually had a swatches um thing that i had as an example that maybe you can bring up where one client actually wanted a war game map but they didn't know what style they didn't know what style, they didn't know what colors, and it matters. If you're going to do something like 3,000, 6,000 hexes, uh, you've, there's so many Skill. different ways okay. of approaching it. Um, so I actually did a swatch format. Uh, you okay. know, we're going to do that. this project together. And I, I pushed this across the table and said, so we can now do these colors we can do roads this way we can do rails this way we can do hills this way we can do forests in multiple different ways 
every single one of these maps does roads, rivers, um, hills, trees in different ways. And just mix and match. Pick which one you want for each of these elements. And I do the yep. same with my cities. I'll, I'll sometimes draw cities in different shapes and stop there and say, pick which one you want. Then I'm going to actually mark off some other things. Yep. Pick which one you want. Give me direction right now. And that's why I said earlier on, as a client, be willing to respond and give information back. Because this would be me or Anna or the other artist pulling information out of you. This is still the question phase in some ways. It's But it's using a visual means to get that out of you. Yeah. Okay. And, and I often send like examples from, from previous maps to, to right. give them a, a chance to choose, should we go this way or that way? Or symbols is one key thing to put in but that I want to know early. Should I use, meaning I often offer say, well, I can use the same symbols I use for my Greyhawk maps because that way I don't need to develop any. Or, or do you have symbols on previous maps that you want to use? Like we have in Cobalt Press, for instance, they had a set of, of symbols that we expanded on previously. But other publishers might simply say, oh, I want to have my own kind of cool symbols and and then we and sometimes they want to go to someone else so we have to develop that and if that needs to be developed that takes time and stuff and will add to the budget so 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 there's some go on and then comes the other big thing in this is like fonts what fonts to use and and styles and that and that's something i often say go in and look and and take screenshots of the stuff you like and then come back and, and we can look at it and 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 pick fonts from it because that's one symbols and fonts are that additional details that is very important to have in that that the client needs to to kind of you you need to kind of come up with what you like and stuff and it will be a little often back and forth and that's something you can take and back and forth during the project but symbol set I think is important because they can take a long time to develop when and take a lot of time so so that's that's so much not on city maps and 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 dungeon maps and stuff but when you do overland maps of kingdoms and setting maps symbol sets are a very important part of it. And, and related to this, you know, and I think I think the point here is, you know, so you've commissioned someone, they're working on the project, and we really do need to sort of talk about contracts at some point here and whether yeah. to do them or oh, not. Definitely. But it, it's, um, if this person now goes completely silent on you, that should be a red flag. Yeah. Even if they're doing the work, you're not getting to see it. The odds of them coming back with something that is not what you want, even mm -hmm. to Anna's point, Wrong yeah. symbols, wrong fonts, mm -hmm. because there hasn't been that back and forth. If Anna yeah. asks you about the fonts, she's probably already working on the map, mm -hmm. but yeah. she, you'll have a back and forth about the fonts. Yeah. She's asking you about the symbols because that's important to her. She doesn't want to do all of the symbols. Like, yeah. And then at the end, you say, oh, I yeah. don't like yeah. them. And, and <laughs> communication is vital both ways because yes, I've had 100%. several projects that I've said, said that okay i need to know this and and in a couple of weeks i need to know because then i move to this phase otherwise i'm stuck here and crickets i don't hear anything and then and that's, that's five exactly weeks later to say right. oh now we need it in two weeks and i was like i've sent two emails six weeks ago asking for it saying that it, i need a month after i get that information before it's done and then they can so so it's important and client check your inbox and and if information needs to flow both ways otherwise that will slow down the project it will make and make the end results not as good as it could be and it takes time and there will be might and it might be critical errors in like file formats resolutions and size so all of a sudden or even and, crop lines right yeah exactly oh, i and, needed a crop yeah. Well, I didn't mm -hmm. draw you a crop. Yeah. And, and if you want to have a print, make sure you know the size of it before the project starts. I've had things that I've added in, I'm not going to say the, the publisher's name, but we've had things that I had to spend one month tweaking things at the end because they didn't have the right size of the poster map. They oh, wow. didn't know, and they just assumed, and they came back, and they were using some Chinese print or whatever, and say, oh, this is the, the, the version. I had to rescale the damn thing, and and I tell them, now it's going to look blurry, and we can sharpen it, but it will still look kind of funny, and and we had to, to redo basically all the symbol ways, and it took another six weeks and do it, and I slapped another thousand dollars, which was cheap because I worked a lot of extra, but I wanted it done, so to speak, so so, so there are, so, so that's the, 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 the thing is that you have to know the technical stuff and and that can be tricky because if you want it printed that means that there are a lot of things 
when you if you want to print a map professionally, that means that you it's a whole myriad of stuff you need to go into and and proof readings and 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 proofs and 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 all this color separation. What's the print process? Do do we do a CMYK offset print set or or is it a digital print? version of it and stuff like that. So there's a whole bunch of it that, that because I need to know that to send the right files and layering, for instance, do you want to have what should be, should, would it be able to blow it up? Do we need to have vector um, symbols and stuff on top of it? Or, or is Yeah, but let's not, let's not scare anyone here. No, no, you, it's you're just that, learn a no, lot of technical things. No, and, I mean, and the thing is, if you're a little publisher and you just want to have it in your little book and print on demand, don't worry about it. It's only if you're going to print it in a book and a po poster. That's when you, you, you should know as it. a little publisher or not, yeah. this is a size that it's going to be printed at. Yeah. And, just, and look, at the end of the day, expect some questions back and you may yeah. not know the answer. But, yeah. And it's OK then to say to Anna, well, I don't know what CMYK yeah. but, means. She'll help yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But we had also had a, a, a question about scale that we should kind of take one sure. minute and, and, and describe. Because there are two things in cartography that rarely gets enough attention in fantasy cartography because most fantasy maps don't need it. And, yeah, and, well. and one is scale and one is projection. Projection we can talk about in some later shows. So that's, we skip that for now. But scale is simply the ratio that a, a piece, a, a distance on the map have in the re relation to the distance in the real world. And it might be one inch on the map is is one mile in the real world or, or or whatever relation, so to speak. And that is simple enough when it comes to a printed map. But scale is a bit more tricky when you use digital map, because then it's depending on your screen size. So 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 a scale the the traditional is what one to ten thousand or one to fifty thousand or one to one thousand and stuff like that. That's the traditional paper map that are printed at a certain size, so you can put like a, a ruler on it and measure the distance. But most did uh, maps these days are used in semi digital form. They are printed in various different media, so therefore scale is more tricky when it comes to and it's almost it's not as necessary. What you need to do in scale in a fan as a map is print, this is a mile, or this is a hundred feet, or this is a thousand miles. And you don't need to put the ratio one to the other. I think that's not really needed in, in, in fantasy mapping, but a distance measurement on the map, either hexes or, or, or squares, or just a little distance scale. That is the important bit because you, you only need half of this, the, the other scale, because you don't need to do dead reckoning navigation on a fantasy map, like, like you do in an airplane or ship at sea and stuff like that, because that's when scale really becomes important down to a T when you have to find things in the dark, so to speak. But so it's basically the ratio of the size of the map compared to the real world. That's that scale. So does that, how's that come into effect cost wise as far as on the, on, on the, um, I mean, is that, is that something you immediately go, oh my gosh, I can't believe like, did you ever get like side blindsided by a scale project? Well, uh, it depends illicit? on how much, yeah, it much depends on how much detail, because if you take like, in my case, you take a setting map. If you want a map of Greyhawk and, and, and you want to have a map of a Greyhawk in a book page, eight and a half by 11. That means that the scale is so enormous that you barely see coastlines and, and Adri forest and the biggest high, the mountain change. That's it, so to speak. It's, it, it's, it's quick and easy and that could be, then you can map a really large area cheap and, and especially depending on the style becomes very important because if you just want some very simple sketching, easy meaning i could do that in photoshop in, in five hours so that wouldn't be that difficult but if you want something fancy looking with lots of little cool tree symbols and and wonderful thing then Alyssa is your person to do it and and something and and that map might take much longer to do and and because you want to have not every other forest is not just a green blob it's a, 2,000 little awesome looking trees with some kind of cute little monsters or whatever it is going with it. And, and so, so style is important and, and the number of, of features on the map is really important. So scale simply enables if you have the, the, the larger the scale or the smaller the scale. So you have like really, you just see a small little area blown up large with really, really big. That means that you get 
a lot of detail in it. So, so it, it, it kind of take the same terrain, the same area, take a barony that is 10 miles across. If you print that in on a stamp, it, it will be easy. Print it on a poster and all of a sudden it becomes more expensive. So, so the, okay. the, the land size is one thing and, and the size of the, the final size of the print is the other one. So okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, I think so, though too, I, I think ahead, though related to that, I think it's fair to say, Anna, this it also becomes part of the conversation. I mean, yes. mm -hmm. I'm working with a very big publisher right now, and scale didn't come into it per se. They knew what to have to fit on the map. Yeah. And my part of this was going back to them, showing them what would effectively fit. Mm -hmm. what wouldn't effectively fit and yep. what wasn't going to look good at the size they were printing this at, yep. you know, and that becomes that two way street. So I was able to go back to them and say, look, you want to get all of this on, but your print size is this. Yep. It's, it's not going to look good. It's yep. going to look terrible. And, and I gave them a mock up. To that. So that's why you want someone who is going to engage. By the way, before we move this forward, mm -hmm. I think it's important to say like Anna and sometimes myself, we're dealing with projects that are long, okay? Months and months and months in duration. So odds on you're going to get a lot of this conversation from us. We're going to tell you, uh, you know, or we're going to work with you on scale and what will fit and what isn't going to effectively fit. But if you're paying someone $50, it, you're probably not going to get that. So <laughs> I just want you to keep a level of perspective of what yep. to expect mm -hmm. out of your person, Yeah. right? according to how much you're paying them and how much time they're putting into it, if they're going to knock something out in four hours, odds on they're not going to do five iterations with you, right? They're just not going to do it. They're charging you $50, four hours or whatever it is. They're just going to like boom, 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 boom. But even then, even then, I've worked with a guy called Dan Smith. He's a very talented artist. who does a lot of character art for me. And even then he'll pencil sketch it all first and say something like this, that's, that, that's a midway point for me. I can have input on that. And yeah. that's that's what really, the last 15 minutes of conversation has been Anna and I saying, expect some kind of dialogue. Your artist is going to probably ask you some questions. If you don't provide some information, because you don't know about the scale details in Anna's world, she's going to ask you, there will be a dialogue about it. Yeah. Respond fairly quickly, otherwise it's going to stall the project. Okay. Keep communication open, just like anything in life, interpers mm -hmm. interpersonal relationships. Yep. It's yep. all about it's all about you know treating people with respect and knowing how to talk to people and knowing uh, you know. Well, and this is your project at the end of the day, right? I mean, look, I'm not gonna uh, I'm not yep. gonna throw anyone under the bus on this one, but I had a client. He's a great client. It was a good project, and he had a firm, firm, firm deadline. I always hit my deadlines, period. I always do. So I hit the deadline. And I always like to try and actually hit ahead of the deadline just in case a little bit of like, you know, wiggle room. Um, and it came to labeling. It came to labeling the map. And he didn't respond for like a month. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah. Now I haven't hit the deadline. Yeah. But that's not, and I reminded him, you know, mm -hmm. but now, now we've missed the deadline, not because of me, because of you, mm -hmm. the client. So yeah. just be prepared. It doesn't have to be and, sitting on your email right now. Just be yeah. prepared to be responsive. Yeah. And and that is also one that I can say to other artists that deadlines are often very important at the beginning of a project, but and they, they are important. That they, a lot of clients and especially big publishers expect you and demand you to to keep the deadline, but don't expect them to always follow it because big projects can be derailed for or, or delayed for all sorts of reasons, especially during pandemics and stuff. So, 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 so often uh, that's more the, the rule rather than, than the exception is sure. that if you have a big project and the, the deadline is 10 months from now, it's going to be delays and, and, and so on and so forth. But that means that you have to work on other things 
down the line too. So I can say for artists and stuff, don't expect just because the project is supposed to run for seven months that it's going to be full work until seven months and then you're not going to hear from it. It's it's I, I take deadlines like that. I know that I need to have this project finished by then, but I know it's a guideline because I know that this project might be, I need to work four months really hard and then it will be six, eight weeks when nothing new comes up because someone else needs to write something or, or, or some other project is something is other part of the project is delayed and then I have to work really hard for 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 six weeks after deadline to to wrap it up so to speak so so expect things to be changed and, and tweaked and stuff down the line I say that to all artists and stuff because that and and that's something you just have to to cope with but so to speak well let, that, let's talk know. about that yeah. point and I, I was actually going to talk about contracts earlier on but let's yeah. talk about them near the end because okay. everything we're yeah. saying goes into mm -hmm. the contract, okay. right? Yeah. Um, revisions. Yes. Revisions. Oh, yeah. You revisions. just mentioned revisions, Anna. Yeah. You, you said yeah, expect I, for things to be tweaked. Yeah, and, and now I come, this is also very different because different artists work in different projects, different t techniques and workflows and tools and stuff. And my situation is kind of unique because the, the project have a number of steps and one key first is the, the the kind of concept phase when when we sketching things send back and forth some ideas and everything is looking ugly but i just want to know where mountains are where rivers are where coastlines are because when i move into 3d and then comes the kind of the getting the terrain in shape if we do i'm talking here about a full 3d cool reference map project and and that means that we need i need to nail that down so to speak and then it's free flowing and we kind of add things and put the hills and, and lakes there and and the the devil forest or whatever it is or or like that it's be talking elevation and major features coastline rivers lakes and hills basically and and or like volcanoes and stuff and once we have nailed that down they it's very very hard to change it afterwards so i always tell them don't we can't go back and change it later that will be really tricky i've done it a couple of times and i told them that will be dirty and ugly and we just do it in photoshop and that means that the all the other options down the line are, are we cut corners then and that is something that a lot of people have difficulties sometimes like in someone who paints in oils and stuff so to speak once they start committing to actually making it that means that you can't change the shape of the face or something like that easily because once you start putting it down then then you you're making real things but then we come into the the new phase when we put like roads and and symbols and stuff like that that means that we can add some extra cool names and stuff no problem that's easy to change that we can tweak that until the last day almost the last day and then comes the the end phase when you export things you make the final versions you put the layers in and stuff and after that it's terribly difficult to change anything and that phase in a big project can be several weeks and that's very important that both that you communicate that to the client and that the clients actually understand it because writers can't think like oh we need to tweak this this text doesn't look good well, let's put there in the forest and all of a sudden i'm supposed to put a forest on the map and and just because a writer can change one sentence and that can mean 50 hours of work for me to go back and change it and that happens often because that writers want to tweak the story's cool kind of thing and they want to tweak it and say oh we want a lake up there and it's like oh, oh. <laughs> that it, yeah so stuff like that it literally happened lakes and forests are things that that seems to to add and, and the city all of a sudden needs a river and i say well that city is like up on the mountain ridge that's kind of hard we need to read top topology of the whole area so to speak oh that's gosh. months work and and so i simply say you skip the river in that city and and they were like oh that was a vital part of the the story so there are things like that, that especially on on kingdom and setting maps and especially region regional maps that are detailed a lot of stuff like that is can cause a lot of, of trouble so to speak so that's why reading and, and there comes the visual thing meaning uh, someone who is not a visual thinker have a hard time to see things when you have the napkin sketch stage to see things like that that's why you need to to send a lot of different terrain samples and and stuff like that back and forth 
and 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 often and I'm I'm probably guilty when I see text. I'm like, oh, that text looks cool. That story looks cool. I read it through in five minutes, and and there might be fifty spelling errors, and I would have no clue about it. And and that's why I think a lot of people they look at my sketches, say, oh, it's beautiful terrain. It looks awesome. So let's go with it. And then the story elements come. We figure that out three months later into the project, which is hard. So this is tough. Uh, cartography is in many ways, I think, more tricky to do than other forms of illustration, I think. But I don't do other forms of illustration, so I might, might be wrong. But there is a lot of tricky pitfalls here. So the, when to stop revising? That's the and thing. For me, it's a different state. First, to stop changing the terrain. That's like one okay, third in into case. the project. Then the terrain is nailed down. Okay, so the mountains are where they are, the rivers are where they are, the the the, the lakes and, and coastlines are where they are. Then comes the biomes, meaning we say, okay, forests and 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 superficial things, color of the terrain and stuff, sandiness and, and where rocks are and stuff like that. And how fertile, meaning are, are is it just grassy plains or, or, or fertile fields, for instance? That's something we can change much later in the project. And then after that is nailed down we've done the textures then it comes down to symbols fonts names and stuff like that you can change that almost all the way up to the final export phase so that is easy and and for from a story point of view it might be tweaking one sentence might need you to go back so to speak so so we operate in a different form and and with different connections than than you do in the text yeah cool uh, Alyssa, what's your time? Like, this is it. Got to stop doing the revisions. Well, and it's a two-way street, uh, ultimately, at the end of the day. From a client perspective, you should be expecting some kind of progress shots. Um, regardless of the format, regardless of the subject matter that your yeah. artist is working on, um, uh, the quicker and the simpler the project, the less versions you're going to get to see, but you should see something, right? Mm -hmm. So if I'm yeah. going to give you an example, uh, maybe some character artwork, and you're given a sketch, and at that point, if you don't point out that the gun on this Shadow Run character is completely wrong, and the pose is wrong, and they go off into inking and colouring, after that, the, the artist is going to have to do a redo, right? You don't yep. need to understand the process. Just understand when you're basically signing off on milestones, okay? This is why when I'm drawing a city, I'm going to give... Honestly, sometimes I send a client 20, 30, 40 iterations, and it's up to the client to pay attention to what I am drawing. because, And then I will, at some point, say, this now is going into coloring. And it's going to be a lot harder to change after this. Sit up, take notice, look at everything that's on there. You can't decide now that the scale is wrong. I've had that once in my entire professional career and I will never have it again. And I threw away the project because at the end of it, after literally 27 iterations, then the client said, oh, no, the scale's wrong. No, you're part of this, right? Mm -hmm. Look at everything, every sample that the, uh, your artist sends you. Look at the details. It's okay to ask for revisions. Do yes. it as they're sending it, mm -hmm. not Don't at wait the end. four weeks and and Don't then re yeah, Me realize that the, the 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 time if you want something done quickly, you have to respond back very quickly because otherwise it, it, you might stall the project, so to speak. The same way that you as an artist, you need to work quickly and send the information when they ask for it. And 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 often I usually give at least we have weekly checkup on things and it depends some sometimes in the early on there's a lot of of, of communication back and forth and then it's usually di dying down a bit and 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 we go into rendering and whatnot and and then when it comes into texture work and getting the forest rights and, and the colors and stuff it's it's kind of a peak stuff again and then it's a couple of weeks or something 
a month maybe when I'm just sitting doing a lot of Photoshop work. And then comes all the naming and, and all that stuff with roads and stuff. So it usually goes up and down the, the amount of, of back and forth, so to speak, in a project. And then at the end, it's it's usually not that much when you go into the final after the final fray of, of information going back and forth. It's the the all the technical stuff at the end, because then it's just a matter of, of sending them files and stuff like that. Then you go into that technical end phase, so to speak. When it's not much about the content, it's more about the format, file sizes, links, where to send it, Dropbox, whatever, all that technical, all the stuff that are, are surrounding it. And so I think we might go into contract stuff now. Yeah. So, yeah, um, a question out of a, yeah, out of a different questions. realm. Yep. Um, Sam Dutter asked, and I think uh, I've been trying to answer it on, 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 uh, on chat, is you all have a client base. Yeah. They, you get your clients different ways. Word of mouth, community, right? It's a small yeah. community. Um, but you needed to start somewhere as far as you know, reach out and all what when you first started who how did you start building up your your yourself Alyssa, you go first yeah so this is kind of talking from like our perspective as the artist yeah which is you know a little bit different because this is meant to be you know more from a now you need a map now what yeah, um it's, right but exactly, i mean exactly. i i, I, I I started um, myself, honestly, I just posted something to Facebook. I posted something to Facebook in a role-playing group. And that was about, I don't know, 12 years ago or something like that. Yeah. And people asked me to do a map for them. Yeah. So I did. And I probably undersold my value, but I just wanted to draw maps for them. And that's how they found me. And that's how I was found. And my first professional client was actually cold ball publishing because they approached me Same and said, for me yeah no the second one actually i had one before yeah we we do a city for us and it kind of grew from there and it was like oh yep. shit i'm gonna have to turn professional you know yep. it, it, it was one of those sort of moments yeah so how me. was i found facebook yeah okay, so you yeah for, for me it was kind of similar i i just was determined to finish my Greyhawk map. And I kind of understood that I realized that because there was so much buzz about it and I got email and stuff and I realized this is going to lead to people want me to do maps. So I was, but the, the, the weird thing was that the situation I was in that was that the way I've done the Greyhawk map was so damn ineffective and, and, and work, meaning I could never do map the same way for any client because it will take forever and, and no one will pay me or wait that long. So I had to, in parallel, I had to develop a cheating way of doing the same thing faster and cut more corners. So I, while I was working on Greyhawk, the, the last, like, since, yeah, like 2010, when I planned, started to think about moving here. So that's when I started to realize I need to have a different approach approach as well. So I worked for the first like five years on, on how to tweak things, uh, the tools and stuff like that to if, make my process more effective to do the same thing faster and looking better at the end. And, and I kind of worked on that as, as that was part of my job to always make things better, faster and, and, and more effective. And, and, and so, so that, but then I just kept doing mapping for, for Greyhawk and then others came. First, it was kind of just, oh, can you just do like DMs and, and, and publishers? Yes. Oh, you can, can you do this? And, and it will be published yeah. everywhere. So, so there were like two or three duds that I just realized that it was learning experience for me and that led to nothing. One, yeah. So, so they were kind yeah. of duds. I, I, did, I think I did three of these duds that I, I was just, <laughs> I was just, wow, cool. Someone just wanted me to do it, so to speak. And they led to nowhere really. And, and then, then came, uh, there was one, little project first uh, and and then uh, there was lamentation of the flame princess i think that came first and and he was desperate he just someone had turned him down and and, and skipped and he had one month and i took it as a challenge so, so I, damn i'm going to do it for one month one and month. i think it was a thousand dollars or something like that and 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 one month or, or yeah. no he was a week he, he wanted a week so i said two weeks and it took 10 days and it was done 
so to speak. So that was a okay. quick and dirty Facebook or, or Photoshop job, and it was for free game, free game day or some what it's called, open art, free RPG day, and and so that was the first. And then okay. Wolfgang from Cobo Press reached out to me and said, "Do you want to do Southlands?" And I realized this is my break. So I said yes before we even discussed money or anything. So <laughs> that's the other thing is that if you approach the artist as the at the right time with the right pitch, you will get it yes instantly. Before then, I had turned down uh, doing, and this is kind of interesting to do um, both Eberron and to do. Um, uh, birthright i've turned down to and birthright was and and Eberron were both very close and 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 so so there were discussions at gen con to do both with fan groups and there were money and they they basically wanted to put money in my bank account and I, they both fell apart not for the money reason they were willing to give me a lot of money for each of them a lot of money more than I've received for any other project, but but to this to this day, so so that was but it was the, the amount of information. I said I don't know these settings because if I'm going to do what I did for Greyhawk, I need to pick brains for a year and I need to have access to all the information, and you need to tell me that on a continuous basis. And they backed out of because of that. So so but so so it's possible. So when someone says now that you want me to do a Forgotten Realms or Dragonlance, yes, hire me for a year. It will cost twenty to thirty thousand dollars, but. <laughs> it then 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 i'm game so to speak so so we can do setting but it's like i need five brains to pick on a daily basis and you need right. to pay me for a year oh then i'll gosh. do it yeah so 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 that's the kind of 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 of, of dedication that it's possible yeah I, I i would do it if the setting is right i can do something like that but it's it takes it takes a lot of dedication and and very few even publishers bulk at that kind of commitment and i can totally understand that what what me and 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 Alyssa do for a hobby sometimes is more than what dedication that mm -hmm. publishers don't want to risk that upfront, so to speak. So, but awesome. it might come the day you never know. Yeah, the contract itself, Alyssa. I know you gave us this copy here, which is nice. So, uh, and this is detailed. Well, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, we've done a hell of a lot of talking here, but it nets out. You want something. You're paying someone to do it for you. Yeah. How to ensure that they're actually doing what you have envisioned in your head um, being able to monitor and see what they're working on. And um, because the more you get to see it, the more the final result will be exactly what you want it to be versus something that they want it to be and ensuring that you get it when you need it. So it matches what you want when you want it um, and it, they don't suddenly come back to you and say i want more cash for this you right it's a way of protecting both sides now let's talk about contracts though for a moment i've done projects with no contract in place i only do it with trusted people that i have a professional relationship with um i wouldn't advise against that let's be realistic though unless you are a big time publisher with a little bit of a legal team to throw around you can't really enforce a contract too much, but it is yeah. a way of keeping both parties a little bit honest. It's a way of yeah. like, escalating it up. And it doesn't matter if you have a signed contract per se, at least have something, a version of this in an email where you both are agreeing to certain terms. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this sample here, I have actually done projects by this contract the Sumba has. If you want a copy of this as a starting block, ask a Sumba, he yeah. will give it to you. No I am not a legal person. I'm not gonna guarantee that this is gonna make your project successful, but it is a good starting block for sure. And it covers some of the major things that we've spoken about today. This is my project. And it has a section at the top that describes the project. And at the bottom, it summarizes, this is what you're gonna get, this is a color of black and white. This is the size. And it is a way of at a very high level. This is what you're delivering. It has a delivery date in here. This would be also the place to do, are we accommodating for certain rounds of review and revisions? That is important to build in. It's also important to build in if it goes beyond that revision stage and is finished with the map and you suddenly say, oh, <coughs> sorry, completely different fonts and can you add three more cities? 
you add into the contract. Yeah, sure. But now it's an hourly rate of X amount. And both sides understand those are the terms. It keeps you honest, keeps the artist honest, right? Yeah. So that's, uh, that's what basically this contract does. I've done projects for professional companies with less than this, mm -hmm. but oh, yeah. the terms are still in writing yeah. and understood. I still make sure I have every single bullet point in this contract, at least down in an email. I'm doing this. It's in color. This is my mm -hmm. size. This yep. is your crop. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give do this amount of revisions with you. When I go into coloring, it's locked down. If you do anything after that, it's going to be at this rate. I at least get that in an agreement with them. So now you can come back at the end if there's a problem and yeah. that you've got something to come back to. If you yeah. don't have these subject matters, you can't say, hey, 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 you said you were going to do this 17 inches by 12. No, yeah. I didn't. It's not my fault that it's only nine inches across by eight. You'll have to scale mm -hmm. it up. Yep. Now you've got a problem on your hands. So yep. a contract, at least getting down the points of the contract down up front helps everyone just level set and say, this is what we're doing together. Yep. That's ultimately what the contract's yep. for. And contract is also good if a public if you have a good contract to go for as a publisher because that also means that you as a publisher have to think when you put it in the contract and I think that's also so important because there come things like I think two very a couple of very important bit meaning how much work is going to be done of course in the time frame but also the technical specs comes into a contract, which means that you should think about them really carefully when you put them down in a contract, because then it might be really tricky to change them. So it's a good kind of way to negotiate and discuss from, because there is the technical aspects. And then one of the other very key aspects, who owns the right and are the rights exclusive or non-exclusive and stuff like that. That's a very, very important bit going forward, so to speak. Is it is the contract meaning, are you paying some, some publishers simply, they pay saying that, oh, they treat it as a piece of art saying, oh, we pay you a thousand dollars to do this, to put on this page in the book. And then they simply say, well, the contract doesn't say anything about taking that image and put it on Fantasy Grounds Rule 20 and, and BDTs, for instance. And, or is the contract saying that we commission you to make these pieces of, of, of art or, or cartography and we can do what the hell we want with it, so to speak. So, so it's something, and that's something both the, 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 the publisher or the, the, the person ordering the stuff and, and us, so to speak, you, both parties need to be aware of what the limitations of the stuff is, because otherwise I can't come and, and or Alyssa, can, we can't come and complain afterwards that we find our maps in, in, in 10 other publishers' books. And, and, and they, uh, do they have the right to sell the art? We need, do they get do they simply commission us to do something and they keep all the rights for it? A lot of big publishers, stuff, that's what they do. Meaning Cobalt Press can do whatever they want with, with my Southland map and they can sell it, give it on, on and put it everywhere, so to speak. That's the, but that's part of the deal because that was in the contract. So, so I knew that from the get-go and I'm perfectly happy with it. But it's, it's also important to have that in the contract. And that one, it's one way to cut costs and stuff and, and simply say, well, are you willing to do it much cheaper if the contract is only to put it in this book and then if we want to put it somewhere else so use vtt versions or whatever we pay you more down the line in some ways i will say no to that in other instances i might be happy to say that okay pay me a quarter of the money now and then we can discuss future things that depends on what the relationship with me have with the publisher that's the, the that will be the main one a small one but i'm non-trusty i said no you need to 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 pay me for all the rights and it's yours and and that will be it sure. and then we discuss future but for someone i really trust sure we can we can definitely start discussing details like that yeah so to, to just sorry. expand upon that real yes, quick yeah. from a client's perspective why should you give a shit about this well let's say you could commission an artist to work on a map for you and then at the project's done they give you the map and then they go selling it on drive through Roll20, putting on yeah. T-shirts, prints, et cetera. That may come as a rude surprise to you, right? So you should want to be thinking about that. It, you may not care about it, by the way, but you might. 
it, back in the day, not that long ago, before the Roll 20s and so on and so forth, odds on, an artist would say, I just want the rights to be able to do prints, et cetera, so I can sell them at conventions and things. And you would be okay with that. I almost guarantee that you'd be okay with that. You don't care that the artist is selling postcards at a, a stall. You don't care that they're doing t-shirts or, you know, prints behind them on canvas. You don't. But you suddenly care if they're distributing in other channels. A contract is a place to then try to ascertain what, who, who has rights to do what in that respect. And I think an artist sometimes has a right to be able to at least do prints at their stall, right? Contract time is the time to actually ensure that both of you are on the same page with that. Very uh, insightful. Uh, Dubtach yeah. asked, uh, do either of you have any royalty agreements on any of your content that you have done? No, I haven't had. There's okay. been discussions about it, but so far I've stayed away from it simply out of my pessimistic nature at times. So I've said it's been better from my point of view to simply say that I, I take the money right away and they buy all the rights from me, so to speak, and then they can do everything instead of paying me down the line. And Unless you're doing something for Star Wars, a bunch of bullshit. Exactly, yes. <laughs> and, 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 and the thing is that it's been very small publishers that have done it and, and to me it's been like I don't even know how they long they will exist. I have no way of knowing if they cheat on me or not and and so on and so forth so, so you can't the, track it you rely exactly. on them to be honest with yeah. you up front. Mm, yeah. Most I would say most products have a short run yeah. of activity and then it mm. just stops. So yep. you get a $32 check as your royalty, like yep. monthly or whatever. You go, yay! You yep. never see another one. And that's spoken from experience, by the yep. way. Mm -hmm. um, I've done it once, and I will never do it again. It's just it's just not worth it. It never pays yep. out. Everyone thinks it's going to. It's not going to. Yep. Most small publishers don't sell anywhere near the volume they think they're going to. Yep. They just don't your royalty checks are going to be extremely small and some look uh, uh, something crazy may happen that breaks the rules it becomes the next star wars and you're going to sit there and go i wish i did royalties but let's yes. be honest yeah. mm -hmm. that's super 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 rare 99.9 yeah. percent .9 of the time not worth it just take yeah. the money up front. but there are some some now coming up when we're speaking of vtts in this that is fantasy grounds for instance they run a scheme that a lot of, of publishers seem to use i haven't done any of this but I've, i know others my friends and stuff who have done for work for fantasy grounds what they do is that that fantasy grounds say that uh, someone can, can do maps for a publisher and then put them on fantasy grounds and you will get royalties on the sales but of that module or those maps and stuff and and i think other vtts have similar type of schemes that you're you never going to make three thousand dollars that way though on a map and, exactly uh, yeah so so i was going to say that that is something that that can be often risky and whatnot so to speak so so the way i've approached it is that i've simply said no you pay me to do the work and then it's the rights yours and then if you want to put it on whatever online stores and 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 for for various vtts and stuff it's yours because the, the it's not only the money part of it it's that if i have to do all the the technical work on putting it there and managing it and and all that so to speak that's a lot of work and i don't want to have it and then i get a lot of complaints about all sorts of technical stuff and I need to know all the technical stuff about Fantasy Grounds or Roll20 or whatever in their stores and their requirements. So I've kind of stayed away from it, but there, it is a niche and it's a big niche when it comes to cartography or the VT virtual tabletops. And also I think there is a niche to develop generic maps and put them on these map stores. That's that's something that I'm oh, yeah, I, I, I looking into in the future. I mean, yeah. I've got my stuff all over there and I, I earn yeah. a little bit of it with yeah. that the doubt. Uh, I will say though, related to this, there is there is a middle ground where and I, I actually got it this week. I was offered a flat rate mm -hmm. plus a bonus on how a Kickstarter did. Ah, now, yeah. based upon that, and the guy actually has a little bit of a track record, um, so yeah. I was able to sort of approximate some funds. Based off that, I was able to go, yeah, you know what? Sure, I'll do it for this fee plus potential bonus. I'll do that. But yeah. I, I, I typically won't engage with royalties because it becomes extremely nebulous. Because who yeah. the hell knows what the royalties are? Exactly. Oh, and, yeah, and it needs course, to yeah. be something like if some big publisher who sells on Amazon or something that they can, 
you could track afterwards. Then I might say that, okay, if Wizard of the Coast wants to give me, me royalties, I might consider it, so to speak, or, or, or Paiso or some big publisher want to say, then I might consider it, but small publishers, no. No, I, I don't want that. So, so, and I think it's too much of a hassle both for me and the publisher to start doing all that stuff. So, so yeah. So, um, Troy uh, Cannibal has a pertinent question, and I think yeah, it was kind of answered early on, but not. So, if someone orders a map or artwork, and this is this is I'm assuming in negotiations, is it wise for you for it to be only for your use, or let the creator use it for other possibilities and without affect cost? I mean, the answer to that's yes, right? Of course. Yeah, it will affect cost, but right. normally I would only work on the fact that they I work and and they have all the rights, so to speak. The exception is my Greyhawk maps, because then because that I don't own the rights to them. It's fan art under the Wizard of the Coast regulation, so I'm not allowed to sell it. So, so I can't charge, and, and because I can't sell the rights to it, it, and that's why I published them under Creative Commons. So, what I can charge for is the work of of doing them, so to speak, and then they will become public domain or not public domain, but the creative comments. But I can do a version for, for someone to have at their table, but then they can't sell it. They don't have the right to sell it. So it will be published under creative comments, but they can they can then keep it secret and just not show it to everybody anybody and just have it for their game. Okay, but but if they, they but they're not allowed to sell it, so to speak. But but then they will be in trouble, not me. So, so I'm, I'm doing it more to, to protect them, so to speak. So, so that's something to, 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 to take in mind, so to speak. Yeah. And for me, my, honestly, my terms are all over the freaking place. Because if I have someone like, well, <laughs> yeah. if I have the Frogs or Trollog Games or Chaosium, you know, these guys own the rights. You yeah. know, they own the rights. And if, if I want to do anything else, I have to go to them and ask. I have to ask. Hey, mm -hmm. can I possibly put this on a print and have it at my stall at a convention? Um, yeah. And most will say, yeah, most are cool, but they're not going to let me go off and start selling it. Um, smaller publishers, I can typically work on a lower rate by saying, I want to be able to sell this through my own channels as well. I'll credit you for what yep. the map origin mm -hmm. is, yep. but I want to be able to put it on my drive through. I want to be able to put it, yep. you know, in, mm -hmm. I want to give it to my patrons on Patreon. Um, yep. And so I want to say 90% of my work, I reserve rights to at least give it to map collectors, uh -huh. patrons, yeah. you know, and I'm yeah. allowed to do that, but I don't own the map from a publishing perspective. My client does. Okay. They're yeah. the only ones that are allowed to actually put it in, yeah. you know, written yeah. works and so mm -hmm. on. Yeah, and I might do, and that's something I consider to do in a couple of years time to put a Kickstarter and make generic big, land maps when I have it nailed down the process and, and simply do like desert areas or, or a different series of maps and have them available in print and, and digital format and stuff like that so people can make their own use of so to speak and then there will probably be a licensee version that a publisher can license it and since it's not exclusive it will be way cheaper so it will probably be a way for for small publishers who have small budgets to get like some really cool map that they can tweak and make into their own version of so to speak and and maybe turn it upside down or or just use it and put their own labels and 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 trimmings and stuff on it for a much lesser cost something that will have cost them five or ten thousand dollars they can get for maybe five hundred dollars or, or something like that to get but then it will be non-exclusive because others might use the same terrain for their version of the map and stuff but it will be a much cheaper way of of getting some really cool base for for their product so to speak so so that's something I'm looking into, a, a way of, of sharing the, 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 the cost, so to speak. So, so I think that will be something interesting that small publishers might be very interested in. And by the way, this week, literally this week, I had a Watsy artist that I commissioned for something that was for personal use. And he responded, uh, I'll do it for this rate. Yeah. But if I actually can keep rights to just sell prints, then this rate. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. okay to have that conversation. Guys oh, yeah, and definitely. Yes. And just because I haven't been up for it right now doesn't mean that I'm, I'm not up for Bring it, it up. in the future. Talk yeah. about it. You yeah, know, definitely. It, yep. And just make sure that both of you, both parties are in agreement on it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
and other artists might very well be. I might have my hiccups and hangups and stuff that other artists might not have. There might be some others who love to have licensing and, and do all sorts of interesting deals and stuff because they might be much more, I'm not much of a business person. So so that's my my kind of problem, I think. And I should be way more interested in, in business and, and all that part style around it. So, yeah. Miss J Maps asks, "How do you go about pricing and licensing? Produce uh, pricing licensing for for existing maps." That is really tricky. I've only started <laughs> to think about this process, so so that will be tricky. First would be to think, okay, what is the the uh, the the, um, the base price for me to do this? So let's say it takes me ten thousand dollars in cost to to simply take to produce it, so to speak, and then then you have the the um, then, then you start having and say that okay, should it be since it's a non-exclusive, then some it needs to be significantly less than that. And then I simply have to start thinking, okay, can I sell this to maybe five hundred gamers for a hundred bucks each, and 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 recuperate most of the money that way, and then have a few high flyer, or or should it be simply say that a small publisher could I could they license it per print run and or something like that or should just be a general license so they can do whatever they want with it and use it in any so so that's the other thing is that it's in a kind of a, a, a right more like you license uh, uh, stock art and stuff like that and and you simply you license it then you can use it you can either license license it for one print or one use or is it simply that my company now had to right to put it in as many products as we feel like forever then it needs to be way more so so it's it's a lot of there are many different ways of having the license is it per issue per use or is it per per licensee get to use it forever in in their product so to speak so it's 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 yeah so these might be different and i'm i might be open for for many different versions of it or or i might be saying okay this is a licensing for that you pay a hundred bucks for each use or something like that or you pay a thousand dollars for for you can use it in any of your products forever or, or something like that or five thousand dollars maybe I that might be way too much for something that is non-exclusive but so, so there are different considerations and and down the line is that i might be saying that a little publisher that i think really cool is like uh, one company uh, approached me there were two guys doing uh, games for kids and i thought they were really cool and say we say our budget is really low it's only three hundred dollars and 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 so i said but i like the idea so much i do two maps for you for three hundred dollars it was small little cute things but, but you may and miss jay by the way work for the same company miss jay oh, knows yeah. exactly mm -hmm. who you're talking yeah, about yeah yeah uh -huh, so, cool. so so yeah so it was yeah we, we actually yeah we did and and i thought it was good so i'm definitely negotiable i, I don't say that oh everything i i charged five thousand dollars for no not at all and 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 so so it, it's not that but if someone comes and 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 saying it's like a business project and they start talking money right away or whatever then okay then we're talking money and big projects so so it's definitely what I do and, and stuff. So, yeah. Very cool. And, you know, look at this. We've already blown almost through to two hours. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, been too, too, it's been too harsh and too babbly. I hope it's oh, been kind of good. interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, so When this started, it was like, I hope we have enough to talk about. Oh, yeah. We, yeah. Okay, we have David ask something here. Yeah, yeah, about uh, about uh, um, uh, stripping out Greyhawk content on a Greyhawk map, which would be a lot of work, but I imagine for the right price, anything's doable. Oh yes, De that's something I definitely and I want to do. That's one of the my projects going forward is to do it more or less the other way around. What I'm thinking is that <laughs> to do a gen generic, so-called generic Kickstarter <laughs> means that the generic terrain will be possible to place it in Greyhawk, so to speak. So I will make dual use out of it, so to speak. So so yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit tricky with that way. So <laughs> so I can use the terrain in, in future Greyhawk projects and also launch a Kickstarter or, or something or, or sell it somehow as generic terrain as well. So yeah, so so that's that's definitely possible. Yeah. So if I, I'm thinking already, Altamira, I don't need to yep. put any Greyhawk content that's in published source anywhere mm -hmm. in that map or around the area or whatever yeah. in that. Mm -hmm. So I'm free and yep. clear because it's yeah. all mine. You, you so. commit, you, exactly. You can commission to, to me or Alyssa to do it, and then you can sell it or whatever or something. Uh, or you can simply say that make it 
make it and then you give it away to every Greyhawk game. Yeah, it so becomes it, a non-exclusive, meaning you have a lot multiple, of, exactly, about. meaning you have multiple options, so to speak, that yeah, you can lots get Lots of over. options to think about yeah, mm -hmm. in this discussion. Yeah. It's really gotten my, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm so thankful for you, for you both doing this this episode on, yeah. on, on, on this just to get, I, I know a lot of people out there are just, they're, they're, they're thinking a lot more um, mm -hmm. of how to approach this and how to yeah. really be detail-oriented. Uh, yep. uh, you know, and to ask the right questions and keep the communication channels open. So, uh, yeah. Oh, you meant the other way around. All the way around. Uh, you could do something like a fancy. You could well, also have yeah, an ace ball, so you could recycle it as a Greyhawk city. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, well, yeah, I haven't done it yet, but it's something, yeah, def I keep that in mind all the time. Okay. And even if I don't recycle exactly, I do workflow and I take uh, assets like textures and and, and, and and stuff like that. Yes. Right mm -hmm. yeah. And and symbols back and forth and stuff like that. So, so yeah, so so there is definitely a win-win, so to speak. What I do for, for Midgard maps, and, and first of all, what I do for Greyhawk maps have affected the, the way, my ability to do cool Midgard maps, but also what I've learned and, and some textures and ideas and workflows and stuff from my Midgard maps are now feeding back into the Greyhawk side of, of things too. So it's, it's, it's a kind of a, they're not completely different worlds, even if they're different worlds, there is a lot of crossover in technology and, and bits and pieces and stuff. So, so, so that means that the, the way I do Greyhawk maps means that I can do cooler maps faster and cheaper for, for Cobalt Press. But the fact that I can do cool Cobalt Press maps means that I can make my Greyhawk maps a bit cooler that way too. So, yeah. Well, Oops, so what do you have, have to a... say in closing to this great topic tonight? <laughs> yeah, I have some ideas. But now I have a doggy that wants to eat treats out of the bag here. So I have to put up her and feed her some more treats. Yep. Yeah, Elisa, you go first. Yep. Yeah, what would you? What do you think, Alyssa, in, in closing on this topic? Uh, so in closing, I suppose I want to, I just want to say that uh, you want a map, you want art. Now what? Ultimately, at the end of the day, you're building a relationship with someone. You know? Very good uh, point. And Very you, good point. You, Yep. You, you are either going to build a great relationship, and it happens, or it's going to crash and burn. Um, <laughs> and they, they do. They just do both sides. Well, they of the stay fence. as a business relationship, and 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 that's it. So well, speak, yeah, yeah, but I would also say that's a successful relationship. I'm talking yeah. about you commission an artist and they disappear off the face of the earth with your yeah. money or not. You commission an artist and they don't actually do what you wanted them to. Yeah. Um. And my point being is, at the end of the day, just recognize that you're building a relationship. It could be a professional relationship. It doesn't matter. It's a relationship, yeah. and building safeguards along the way for yourself communicate communicate clearly mm -hmm. and often because honestly just doing that avoids any surprises further down the road um if you commission someone that you've never met red flag they don't really ask any questions of you red flag and they don't give you any progress shots red 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 flag mm -hmm. then you know there's you're increasing the level of risk. So for me, this is a relationship building game. I have very professional relationships with many different companies, but ultimately they're built upon communication. So just communicate. This is a social thing. Communicate yeah. like both sides. Um, I actually honestly feel my customers are reassured by the way I'm communicating back with them, the questions I have, the progress reports I'm providing. So if you're not getting that from a client perspective, yep. you're not getting the communication that you should be expecting. So I would just say, recognize that fact. It doesn't matter if it's a $50 thing or a $10,000 thing. If it's $10,000, by the way, I'll do it. But um, <laughs> ultimately, at the end of the day, you yep. should be getting something back from the person that you're working with. Yeah. Right, you should. I, I actually commissioned someone the other day, uh, $50 to draw me some little map components and things like that. Um, even she was, here's my first batch, how does it look? You know, here's my second batch, how does this look? I'm like, this, she's communicating with me, I'm reassured. There was no yeah. contract because I, I was reassured. So for me, that's my takeaway approach it that way. Sure. Yeah, 
and and also don't expect publishers to to fork up enormous amount of money right away they they will ease into it so to speak and they they and and big publishers will not be the first one to hire you no matter what so to speak and 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 then when they do they often have stringent meaning i haven't worked for paiso and and west of the coast i've been approached on on a couple of projects but there's not been the 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 time or the it, there's been other issues around it that I couldn't take it at the time and stuff and they often have like when they come and knock on the door you need to be able to drop a lot of things because they're the big ones so to speak so it's it's kind of but work on it and and do good work and and like someone said the, the reward for doing good work in the RPG industry is more good more work so and build so more, it's, it's more, relationship right it's yes it's a yeah. reputation Yes, so too, on yeah. both sides. It's a small industry, and and if you screw up, then then it will f go around, so to speak. As a customer yeah. and as an artist, exactly, it works both ways. Because artists, we talk about who doesn't pay and and who kind of is non communicative and and whatnot. So it works both ways. So yeah. So try and be friendly and and professional and and inspire inspire each other and 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 kind of yeah ask and and be interested as, both as a publisher and and someone be interested in what the artist is doing and and also the same way when you're doing it be interested in the project and and the product and 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 so on even yeah and 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 kind of ask questions and, and so on and and realize that you take on the responsibility because doing a map for for a world it's just think about what Darlene did 40 years ago and and we're still living with it and mm -hmm. wonders over it and people still have it meaning it's it's an honor that that I might have done meaning people might have still pour over my maps decades in the future which it might be the legacy I leave behind so it's kind of something I have to put a lot of effort into and, and treat responsibly even if it's just for a game it's just fun there's it's just for 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 it's not real so to speak but it needs to be treated with respect and dignity and 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 fun and inspiration as well so it's it's kind of tricky but there is one thing i want to say as as a wrap up and and that is i'm going to open up a, a new way of 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 commission greyhawk work and i'm going to give uh, i'm going to set up a, pay, a special patron tier for a few I, I think i will start out with five patrons and i haven't set the exact price but i think it will be 30 or 40 dollars somewhere around there uh, per month and and i will give someone who wants if you want to have your own version of of the the greyhawk of my greyhawk map flannies map with your own settlements and changes and stuff you can kind of subscribe to, to that Patreon tier and we can have a session each month where we put in things and change names and, and put in new roads like I do for, for, for Jay. I'm spoiled. And, and, and exactly, <laughs> and, and a few others. So yeah, I've, I've, I've done it for a few others. So I want to 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 see if I can set up a test. It will be a test run for a year or something and, and then evaluate on both sides if it works for me and if it works for others. But it's, it's a going to be to be a, a way to 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 hire me on a monthly basis so to speak to to do work and it will be a couple of hours a month we can do like a zoom call and discuss things so you can send a list of changes and and i will simply say well i can do this much this month so so a few hours per month on a continuous change so to speak of things and over over time it builds to to quite significant change so to speak yes it does yeah it builds up it so to speak because you you can go in and change 20 settlements or, or names or stuff like that every month and some roads or whatever every month and yeah, it builds it up over up time so quick. to speak so yeah so 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 that is something i want to to uh, to open up for for uh, i think i will start with five and then see if that if that works really well i might bump it up to 10 but it's a long-term commitment so i need to know that i have like 10 hours or 20 hours a month yeah. or something like that to do it so, so, we'll so i will start yeah, yeah exactly i will start wise. with five and and if it works really well i might say a year from now that okay i could do 10 maybe or something like that but i don't think it will ever be more than 10 never ever yeah. but 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 five i think will is a reasonable uh, way to have it so to speak and see if it works and i will also write in that i might want to end it so to speak i might boot someone from it if the conversation <laughs> doesn't work and so on just like someone can simply say no i this didn't work out so it's not a commitment that you 
pay forever. You can pay me and then simply say, no, it didn't work after three months or I got what I want. And then you can stop paying me and, and that will be it, so to speak. But I want to write in and say, I also have the, the right to end that, <laughs> that sure. process too, so to speak. We both have that right, so to speak. And I will, just for legal reasons, I have to put in there saying that I can deny a request for name for whatever reason. If someone puts awesome. obscenities and stuff like that, we talk about contract. We, we have to have stuff like that in there. So 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 but i think it could be an interesting cool way for someone to to be able to to tweak their make their own version of the greyhawk map so to speak awesome yep and that will be back in two nights so yes mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely yep. so we got a lot of fun going on i figured i'd come here yep. to the shout outs but uh so Alyssa, what, what's going on too what, what do you got what do yep. you got brewing you got anything fun going on yeah, I've got a lot of things booming going on. Um, two maps by KRCM, can't tell you about them. One is getting close to being finalized. I've got the 2022 version of the cosmology of RPGs uh, going on. Um, oh, yes, wow, it amazing. looks so cool. The sneak peeks you showed yeah, us. I, I am up to the letter H. I haven't got all the way through it yet. Um, it's already looking H or F. God, I hope it's H. Um it's going to be over a thousand games and I'm adding to that map. So that's going to be the main thing. I'm hoping to have it done for Gary Khan next year. And um, I've got some fun projects that are going to fill up like the next six to nine months uh, of next year. Um, I'm also going to be uh, doing the Gary Khan um, convention map again next year. So I'm really, really, really pumped about that. And we've got some fun things planned for it. So I'm, Super pumped, and I'm going to be streaming on the GaryCon channel next year as I work on it. Well, that's cool. Very, very cool. Um, starting in 2022, do you know what night? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. No, I mean, I'll probably start it this year once I'm done with the KRC and maps, to be honest with you. I like to try and get a jump on things. Um, but yeah, haven't done it. Just Luke asked me if I would. And of course I will. It's Luke. Um, it's Luke. But yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what night yet. I don't know <laughs> when. I just know that I will be doing it and will be. Will, it, it, you know, a couple of years ago, I did the GaryCon 12 map. And it was it was a great journey because we it's it's taking a uh, hotel convention map and it's not your normal hotel it was, it's a yeah, very, this it's all over the place oh, it's, it's a very so cool. it's all over the place you um, showed it on the first episode very first of, show. of right, yeah, right the first right. Of the, i actually had a guy walking kind of the site taking photographs so we could be sure that they it was accurate uh, because a hotel map misses some things um, the city planning map misses some things. Yeah. The previous maps on GaryCon missed a lot of things. Uh, and they can move walls around inside the convention itself. So it was a journey. Uh, and I'm hoping to take that. We're going we're gonna to rebrand it. We've got an exciting scenario that they're going to do next year. And this map is going to look like nothing else I've ever done. So I'm really pumped about that one. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awful Stupid just raided us in. Thank you so very much. Yeah, They're taking welcome. part in virtual uh, virtual Greyhawk Con as well. Thank you so very much for that raid in. Hang out. We do have a giveaway from uh, um, Frog God Games exclamation point drawing. Please feel free to sign up for it. Um, I, um, you know, and we're going to have uh, we'll have a little fun here at the end. Here we're on shout outs now. We've talked about I need a map now. What? So Anna, uh, what else is going on? You got anything else you would like to discuss? Yeah, with? I have a little bit. What's going on in the background here is my new uh, Greyhawk repository. I've added okay. a lot of stuff, so I'm going to put the link to all my links. Uh, there will be more map streams that I'll sit and do live uh, mapping sessions next week, and 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 also at the Bitly forward slash GH maps, you can take a look at, at this. And that is my new home for Greyhawk content. So try it out and see if it works and, and report back to me if it doesn't. So so because I think it's, it's a really cool place to find all the stuff and I've loaded it with old stuff, more is coming and new stuff too. There is the, the latest Earth model is in there. And the Atlas is the new home for the Atlas and stuff. So, so I'm trying out the Notion because it's so easy for me to upload and manage it that way. And it's accessible, hopefully very accessible for others too. So, yeah. 
Awesome. And and yeah, so and then we have legends and lore and stuff. So so and and there's a bunch of stuff. So coming yeah. in, I work in for Griffin Lore Games as the big thing right now, doing a, an Ar Arcadia map for their their latest uh, Kickstarter that that was very successful. If like a, a month ago they had it, and so I'm working. It's delivery in a couple of weeks. So it's it's kind of that intensive phase when we start nailing things down, so to speak. So yep. Yes, I share uh, uh, the massive Lara Tep group, the Sphinx art, right? That was, was that you, Alyssa? Yes. Yes, absolutely. You're in that group, Dale. are you? Yeah. Dale's all over. Dale's, Dale's like, you know, behind the scenes guy, you know, except yeah, when I'm we talk about Great Kingdom. So, yeah. yeah. I, I am a huge Cthulhu um, advocate. I love Call of Cthulhu. Uh, I, if I run something, it's always Call of Cthulhu or Medieval Cthulhu or Invictus. And um, that's my shtick. That's what I do. And I was not happy with, you know, there's a description of the Sphinx that Lovecraft did. There's a description of the Sphinx that's obviously in Masks of Nyala. And all of the artwork out there doesn't match it. It does not match either description. So uh, I asked um, an artist if he would be willing to actually draw me his interpretation of it, and he did. That's awesome. Okay. Really cool. So I can um, tell Steph there is a Meyerhawk section in that one, so I'm so yeah. glad that people have discovered yes. that. So yes, yeah, so I I put a section and and it's one it's big database, stuff. so so I can actually present the material in many different ways. So, so there will be kind of everything again. for for Nyrond and everything for Furiundi and stuff like that in the future too. So so it's very easy to make these changes and 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 present it because it's not a website; it's Notion, so I can work on it on my computer and others can see it right away so it's it's kind of it's a cool way of doing it yes that's good as sure because uh, john is uh doing uh rel astra if i recall for his new game so all right so what's going on here yeah mm -hmm. so we have if you're new uh to gray hawk i know a lot of lots of stupid people came in thank you so very much um and if you're uh, we had a lot of new people on the stream today i have never seen your names before thank you Awesome. Part two of three, three weeks, we are doing Greyhawk campaign development. Uh, how do you do it? You know, go about from scratch or whatever. Last week we did PCs and NPCs. Sunday night, and it's, it's now, note the time, 7 p.m. Eastern, not 7.30. Kind of made it a little earlier, and you all, uh, you know why Gary Khan was available, is available at 7, uh, their channel to raid in, so... You know, we moved it up a half hour. It, it worked last week, so uh, we're going to go 7 o'clock again. We're going to talk locations and reference books. So if I say I want to do adventuring in the Vesby Forest, I'm going to get out the Marklands book. Dale, we're going to say we're going to do Great Kingdom. We're going to get, get out Eyes of the Evil. Not Eyes of the Evil. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Ivid the Undying or whatever. And we're going to try and go through a lot of locations, give you some ideas to how to start up your campaign in Greyhawk. So uh, that's on Sunday. Uh, uh, the next week of streams, Wednesday night. I'll do this real quick. Wednesday night, Migrations. Okay. David Leonard's going to join us. Greyhawk Musings, the blogger. There's his link. Oh, thanks, guy. I really appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Next Wednesday, it'll be myself, Greyhawk Mike, and uh, Anna, and uh, and David Leonard talking migrations of humanoid tribes, demi-humans, Oridians, Beklunish, the Sewell, all throughout Greyhawk. We're going to go into that depth on on Wednesday, Thursday. I haven't updated the date on this. Sorry, it's a twenty. It's uh, that is not a. That's that's correct. It's Saturday. That's yep. the Saturday night special. Yeah. So yep. uh, I'm, my normal games on Thursday. The second part of, of of what we did last night. This is the Saturday night special. Big big game. Uh, a lot of all star players. Um, you know uh, we have uh, and they, they've confirmed. So we have the sculptor Christine Van Patten and her husband are playing in the game. We have we have Mike Disney because it's that's all about his character Scarn. And, and Tea Time with Taryn, uh, Cassandra de Monty Hall. Anna, yes? You available? Yep. Yes? Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. there you go. And I, that'll be yep. the six, and then we'll we may add one more in there uh, if, if that person's available. We'll continue with the story of Scarn, and that'll be on our next cool. special weekend game, 6 p.m. Eastern, next Saturday the 18th. And it's always a Titan Dice giveaway from Strategy and Wiz Dice. Everyone loves those big dice. So uh, thank you. Uh, we will have some fun with that. And then uh, beyond that, Greyhawk Con is coming. 
it is coming and it is coming hard. So yep. note to that. Um, and I'm just going to show one because Lawful Stupid rated in here real quick. And that is uh, note that they um, the sun they are on Sunday morning. All right. So as you can see, the Fane of Whispers in 2E. So we got some old school content from Lawful Stupid. It's 8 a.m. EDT. So uh, that's Eastern Daylight Time. It, it, I think it's sold out in the system. It's a, that would be seven Central because tabletop events is in Central. There are still like twenty-five events with open seats. In fact, we just put another Greyhawk Reborn game in today. So uh, there's there's a new game in there. Chantel, you got you got spots open. Our men's got spots open. Tom Van Deveen, Arneer has spots open. Um, I think even Alan Gurley has a spot open or two. So there's there's a lot of open seats for good games. So, uh, you know, uh, sign up. Here uh, Here's the link right there. Boom. Go in. It's five bucks just to cover costs. Uh, and then, you know, if you want, then you can order you can order one of these great shirts as well uh, that are available. I'm running out of large ones because uh, apparently everyone's old, old, heavy set guys like myself, right? So I'm running out of the XLs and the 2XLs. <laughs> But other than that, great show tonight. Let's do the giveaways. Let me go back to the main screen. Thank you all for such a wonderful, wonderful evening. Um, yeah, but uh, you say we will be back with Fantasy Mapping Show in next month again. So, next so, month, yes. Yeah, we yeah. haven't set the date, but look in, in all the social yeah, media. Yeah, we'll set, we set the date yeah. after this. Mm -hmm. My guess is because Greyhawk Con is that first weekend in October, I need the we weekend it, after that off. Exactly. We, yeah, so exactly. Probably, so it yeah. might be late in the Probably month, the 15th. So uh, yeah. 15th of mm -hmm. October, I think, is the date I looked. Yep. We'll, we'll, we'll okay, verify that. Okay, that sounds good. Yep. Um, but um, I'm going to close this out. Last call. Thanks, Gal. You got yours? Good to hear. Very good to hear you got your shirt here. So let me uh, close this out in uh, uh, the winter of the $25 gift certificate to Troller Games, which I will whisper you the code almost immediately after the show, um, unless I crash everything. Uh, closing it out. Here we go. The winner is dun, 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 Obsidian Risk. Obsidian cool. Risk Rats. Yeah, I just saw him say, "Great stream as always." So there you go, Obsidian. I will, awesome. um, I will put that in. Um, yeah, there you go, Gratz. I will send that to you uh, via Discord. Okay, no problem. Uh, I'll get it to you in a little bit. Thank you, Pex, for doing that, and thank you, uh, Frog Guy Games, for um, basically being the main sponsor of the Fancy Mapping Show. Uh, note that their necro uh, Necropolis uh, Kickstarter is still going on, I believe, and you can still get no, that. No, that's done. That's ended. Yeah. You can't get in late? Oh, sorry. Uh, well, the, you might be able to sort of get in late, but definitely the Kickstarter is done. Pex will be able to sort of indicate if there's some mechanism for late bidding. But the but the Rappanathic Miniatures uh, Kickstarter is going on now uh, uh, that's that's linked in through them, Necromancer Games, and the miniature company that, that's doing it, So, um, which is really cool, and I was excited about that. I know uh, Asher was as well. We're going to raid into someone I've never raided into before. And we're going to raid into NPC Voices, and that's Josh from Blue Box's stream. He's got hey. his own channel. He yeah. is Brim, his half ogre character on Blue Box, cool. is in the Grand Melee of Altamira that Saturday night. Yeah. So we will see him. Thanks. Let's raid in. Let's raid into Josh. He's got like eleven people on now. Let's let's multiply by six or seven times. Okay, <laughs> sound good? Yeah. Sound good. Yeah. Alyssa, thank you everyone yes. who came and watched and all the good questions and wonderful in the chat and stuff. So thank you. Yes, thank you everyone for another wonderful yep. show on a Friday night, and I uh, really appreciate yeah. the uh, participation. We'll see you all soon. I'll see you all Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for a great Gavin show with uh, Anna, Jason Zavoda, myself, and probably whatever mysterious Tim will show up too, you know, because he's mysterious like that. So we will see you all. Uh, see you all Sunday. Have a good night. All right, let me set this up. Thank you. Thank you all for the nice, uh, the nice thoughts yeah. here. Yeah. All right. I didn't even tell him that we're raiding into him, so he's going to be shocked, which is great. <laughs> I love shock value of a yeah, raid. Yeah, you did so cool. The, uh, the, the, the other the night, night when I did Darling Creep yeah. Show, yeah. Yeah, he had like, oh, she, she had like four or five or nine yeah. or something, and you brought in like 175 or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting up a good number here. Yeah. That's great. All right, so that's yeah. almost six times what he had, at least. So five, four, three two, one. I'll see you in uh, two nights. Have a good one. Make sure that went in. Yep. We popped over. Oh.
Thank you all.